We welcome you to the Iowa Speedway. This 7 8 of a mile track was open to NASCAR in 2009 and since then has no doubt been the best show in town and some might say one of the best on the nationwide schedule. NASCAR was built on short track racing and tonight the nationwide series returns to its roots. In other sports, athletes come from sand lots summer camps in the minor leagues. In racing, they come from the short tracks. Saturday night bull rings that cover the American countryside in sweat, oil, and dirt. It feels good to get back in touch with those roots. That's why it feels so good to be here in Iowa. When you drive into the Iowa Speedway, you notice two things. Number one, lots and lots of corn. Number two, all of the fans. Every NASCAR race since 2006 has been sold out. In fact, extra grandstands have been brought in for tonight's event. Hi, everyone. I'm Shannon Spake. Welcome to NASCAR Countdown. We had some weather in the area earlier today, but it's moved out, and it looks like it's going to be a great night for a race. And what a difference a, a week makes. Last week at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, drivers were challenged by that one-groove high-speed track. Tonight, anything goes. As progressive banking and multi-grooves make this a playground for every single driver that takes the green flag. Still, one thing does transfer. And that's the championship battle, because one week ago, the points were rattled. Today, the NASCAR Nationwide Series will leave its first imprint on the two and a half miles known as the Brickyard. Whoa, Kyle gets around. Can he save it before hitting the wall? And what a save. Get a roll in. Yellow is out. 18 laps to go. We're racing again at Indy. Boy, what a slow on the restart. We got another issue with the L.A. Sadler beating to the lineup. We'll have to wait and see what the ruling is from NASCAR, but right now it is Elliott Sadler out in front. Be aware. Two car being black flag right here in front of you. Black flag. I mean, he's running his damn tires. Tell him to review it. The three had me jacked up. I couldn't do anything. The two is arguing that he got a push from the three car of Austin Dillon. Oh, yeah. He does. At this time, do not speed. We will deal with this after the race, man. NASCAR just taking the championship right from me. And a hundred thousand dollars just went out the window for Elliott Sadler. Robert Fimbley just told me right out of his mouth, I did not jump the start. He did not jump the restart, but the rules are that he cannot beat the number one starter to the line. My heart was definitely ripped out of my chest, and I don't know why. And the penalty had a profound effect on the points. Before the black flag, Sadler was 17 points ahead of the second place driver. Now he leads by just one point. And Jim Noble, Elliot Sadler, knows he has some work to do. Well, I'll tell you what, I was going to ask Elliot Sadler what his frame of mind is, but after that poll winning run, I think I already know. Can you contrast the emotions of six days ago at Indy with the high today, getting the pole position for the race here at Iowa? Well. You know, I went to the shop this week, and, and we're all very, you know, upset and very emotional about what happened to us last Saturday. We really felt like um, one slipped through our fingertips. But we all got together and said, look, we, we've, got to, we've got to pull together and we've got to move on. You know, we, there's bigger fish to, fish to fry, you know, towards the end of the season. So my one main financial guys brought me a really good race car. I think it's our third pole in a row here at Iowa, and we got a good car for tonight. So there's no better way than rebound and coming here and showing up with a fast race car. Very proud of my guys giving me that. As fate would have it, you will lead the field to the green. <laughs> Are you positive about what you can and can't do on restarts? Well, we asked a lot of questions in the driver's meeting, and, and it's still up to the drivers to try to um, manage the restarts the, the best we can. So we're, uh, I'll do what I normally do on restarts, and hopefully it, it, it's within the guidelines. But I think everybody's going to pay a little bit more close attention to, to what's going on up front tonight on all restarts. But uh, just, again, proud of my guys. We got to put last week behind us. There's nothing we can change, nothing we can do about it. Yes, it still hurts because that's the inaugural race. It's such a big racetrack. But the best medicine uh, in racing is going the next week and kicking a little bud. And, um, you know, starting on the pole tonight says a lot for my team and how we rebound. Helps with having the, the first pit stall 
and we just got to put a whole race here together tonight for all 250 laps. All right, it might be the most highly anticipated start of the history of the Nationwide Series. Elliott Sadler leads them to the green. Shannon. And of course, that restart has been the hot topic all week. So let's continue the conversation now as we send it upstairs to the guys who will call this race, Marty Reed and Ricky Craven. Guys? Well, thank you, Shannon. Hello again, everybody. You talked to Elliot yesterday before practice, and it did not sound like he was over Indianapolis. Marty, I can tell you that he wasn't over it. And I thought it actually carried over into practice. A little bit of a hangover from what we talked about at, back at Indianapolis. And here's what's in play. If you go back to last week, Elliot still feels as though he did everything correctly. But by the letter of the law, you cannot beat the lead car back to the start finish line. And then Elliot pulls over in front of Brad, basically leaves no, no intention. Listen, here, here's the restart zone. Brad actually starts the, the restart, but Elliot had such a push from Austin Dillon that he's in a compromised position. He does get to the start finish line first, then of course he's penalized. He made a statement, Marty. He came here. He was really fast, qualified with a track record, and I think his team needed that, and I think Elliott needed that. Well, the other thing he has to remember is, is that he's been in this position before. He was in this position at Darlington. Right, so if you're an Elliott Sadler fan, <laughs> find comfort in this. Go back to May at Darlington. Similar situation, and that looks like he's destined for a win. Gets a bump from Joey Logano, turns into the wall, goes from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. Elliott's an emotional driver. He felt like the championship slipped away right here. Even though it's only May, he comes back to Iowa the next week and sets on the pole and finishes second in the race. And, and you, you can, can see that it really paid dividends, Marty. Second, fifth, and seventh after that. And he goes from a 34 low in the negative column to 12 high. So we'll find out how it affects the race tonight, Shannon, once we go green. Thanks, Marty. All right, let's turn our attention to the driver who has dominated at this racetrack, and that is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Stenhouse Jr. looking to win his fourth consecutive race here at Iowa. And if you buy into the theory that in every driver's career, there's that one track that makes them a star, well, Iowa is that track for Stenhouse Jr. Fans at Iowa on their feet, and we're underway. Promise fulfilled. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is a winner. Look inside. He's still behind. Showing you his nose here. He's inside now. Oh, come on. He's got a problem. Stenhouse is then hit hard from behind by Edwards. It's going to be Stenhouse with the race win. And we are coming to the white this time. A little too late to make a big charge. For the third race in a row at the Iowa Speedway, Stenhouse to the checkered flag first. All right, Ricky Stenhouse, the obvious question is three straight wins. What is it about this track that you control? I don't know if I can control anything. Um, you know, I think definitely some of the competitors have, have gotten the race cars closer. Our, our fast old Mustang was a little tight yesterday in practice, a little tight in qualifying. But what we've seen over the last couple of years here is that at night, the, the temperatures uh, cool down and, and the racetrack tends to get a little looser for us. So that's what we're hoping for. But, uh, you know, the guys prepared great race cars. That's how we've won three in a row here. Uh, definitely would like to make it four. All right. What's the greater danger, being overconfident or the pressure to have to get that fourth? I don't think, uh, you know, I don't think we have any pressure about getting fourth, uh, the fourth win in a row. We, we always go for wins every racetrack we're at. It doesn't matter. Each and every week we show up to win the race. Um, you know, that's just happened the last three times we've came here. So uh, we got the Nationwide Insurance Dash for Cash Award as, as well. Um, so hopefully I can win my fan $100,000 in us as well. And uh, we really want to win this race bad. All right. He said also that he does not want this streak to come to an end. By the way, he is our in-race reporter to ask number six, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., a question that may be answered during the race. All you have to do is go to ESPN.com, keyword in-race reporter. And stay tuned to see if your question is the one selected for tonight's race. Shannon? Now, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., he's wearing a baseball cap right now, but he is one of the drivers who's almost always sporting that cowboy hat and Tony Lama boots. And the tire was spot on when Ricky presented last month at the Country Music Awards. And he took our Marty Smith along for the ride. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., what's up, cowboy? Marty Smith, what's going on? I'm in Nashville for the CMT Awards. What are you doing? I'm here for the same reason. Let's go check it out. Let's do it. Marty, you looking for some boots? I am. You think pointy's me? I kind of do. Does it work with the faux hawk? Yes. People send me emails about how jacked up my hair is. 
would you just go all David Pearson on us and wear your cowboy boots as a racer? I, I got as close as I can get. Are they fire I retardant? Osher, I got Osher driving shoes. So what kind of arrow push are we looking at with this thing? I'm thinking uh, we're gonna have to get the, the splitter. Uh, you know, they like to float around a lot. So. Indeed. I mean, can you imagine corner, like going around a corner? Yeah, that'd be tough. There you go, girl. See, yeah. she picked up yeah. on my parade way. how it is. Why are we How come we're the only people not a ride? They must not have got the memo we were coming. I don't guess they did. Let's forget this parade. Let's do it. Hey, let's go and earn a stuff look at some records. Yeah, let's go. Get this. Get this. I've you already what? got that. How about this, Marty? Little Conway Twitty. I think I need to start doing some vinyls. You do need to. All right, man. Got some records, got some new boots. Yeah. Now what? This is like kind of like a dream come true, hanging out down here with all these guys. I can't wait to see with whom we get to speak. I actually went out in October to Kansas City to perform the National Anthem of the Nationwide Series, so. I think I was there, yeah. Yeah, you must have done a great job because we didn't talk bad about it. Does it ever get old? Uh, not really. Um, you know, it's it's fun. Who's the coolest person you met at one of these things? Oh, Johnny Depp. Who's your favorite driver other than myself? Other than you, man, other than you, I gotta go Aaron Hart Jr. I am a huge fan. Yes, I know you're gonna guess, but Danica Patrick. This is my, you know, second or third interview ever. So, you know, we're on, we're on different sides of it now. I think you got it. Good job. You know, there's not much pressure at this award show. You just kind of can let your hair down. We have Euro Sheik and we have Hillbilly Highway. You gotta be slim and trim to get in those Indy cars, so. I don't have one. That's close. Enough. I feel like you probably got more experience at this than I do. Not really. No, thank you. What is your favorite NASCAR memory? My favorite memory was uh, teasing Kurt Busch about his ears. He used to have ears like this, and I teased him on this old show I did. And then next time I saw him, they were pinned up tight. Yeah, I think it's a wrap, man. It, this was a lot of fun. Cool. Let's get out of here. Let's do it. Both. A 19-year-old Joey Gase is a relative, relatively newcomer to the Nationwide Series. And for this Iowa native, this weekend represents more than just another race. Last April, Gase's mother died suddenly of a brain aneurysm. She was an organ donor whose kidney went to 25-year-old man named Jordan Shaw. Jordan's kidneys were destroyed during cancer treatment he received when he was just two years old. And earlier today, Joey and Jordan met for the first time. Definitely a special day for both of these young men. <laughs> oh, we do this big wrap and we're crying. Say cheese and rice, though. And don't forget for tonight's race, Joey Gase, he'll roll off 25th. And you can watch Gase as well as the other guys in the field. You can check them all out on Race Buddy tonight. It's enhanced coverage for select nationwide series races with more cameras than ever. All you have to do is log on to NASCARNationwideSeries.com slash Race Buddy to check it out. Now, it has been a very busy weekend for four double duty drivers in the field. Sam Hornish Jr. is fourth in points. He is one of those drivers, as well as three others who traveled into Iowa earlier this afternoon. You see Mike Bliss getting off the plane, Joe Nemechek as well. Kurt Busch also making the trip to Iowa from Pocono, landing earlier this afternoon. Sam's travel, however, is a little bit different than the rest of the guys because he has made the trip from Pocono to Iowa and back. He's done that 978 miles a total of five times in the last two days because he's practiced and qualified both cup and nationwide cars. So this is what his schedule looked like today. He started out in Pocono early this morning where he qualified that cup car. He then flew to Iowa. He qualified the nationwide car, attended the driver's meeting. He just got introduced and now he is waiting to get in that 12 car and take the green flag. And you thought your commute was bad. Jim Noble standing by with the well-traveled driver. Well, Sam Horner starring in the sequel to Planes, Trains, Automobiles without the train, of course. What's the maybe the one thing we don't consider that you have to go through when you do the double? Um, being able to get a little bit of sleep and uh, what you do for your meals and just, uh, you know, all the time that goes involved. Really good thing was uh, most of the guys at Penske Racing, uh, they've done this kind of thing before, so they've had the opportunity to, you know, get all the logistics figured out and uh, just uh, 
you know, for me, uh, missing a little bit of that practice yesterday when we come here with a new tire that, that Goodyear brought to try to give us, uh, you know, better reliability. It's just, a, you know, it's a tough thing because, um, you know, some of the other teams learned a little bit more than what we were able to. But that's part of what, what we get for uh, running two races. But uh, just really happy to be in the nationwide dash for cash and nationwide insurance for, um, you know, giving us something really cool to be able to go out there and race and just, uh, you know, you, you only got to beat three other people. Um, but they're three pretty tough people to beat this week. So uh, real happy with our work dodge and uh, hopefully we'll have a good race. How about the rain that washed all the rubber off the track? That's another variable you have to factor in. Yeah, but uh, for me, it's it finally kind of evens the track up with what for everybody else and you know everybody else has got about the same amount of time uh, on, a, on a green track as we do two laps right now and uh, you know it's going to change throughout the race and I'm just looking forward to getting the opportunity to go out there and to run you know we've talked about these races for all week and uh, you know we're only got two more two more events on track and uh, hopefully we'll have good showings in both of them. He's got himself a good starting position and as he mentioned a little extra cash on the line tonight <laughs> for Sam Hornish Jr. Shannon. All right, let's talk some money. Over the last three races, eligible drivers have had the opportunity to win $100,000 in the Nationwide Insurance Dash for Cash. And here's a look at the drivers who have won it. Austin Dillon, Elliot Sadler, Michael Annette won the money with his finish last week at the Brickyard. Tonight is the last Dash for Cash race, and these are the guys who are going for the loot. We've got Stenhouse Jr., Dillon, Annette, and Sam Hornish Jr., and look at their finishes here at the Iowa Speedway. Of of course, Stenhouse Jr. leads the way with his three wins. And tonight, not only the drivers will win $100,000, but a fan will also win $100,000 if their driver finishes ahead of the rest. Now, we will chat with the most recent $100,000 winner. He's standing by with Rick DeBrule. And for Michael Annette, that $100,000 is important, but we've got to take a serious note. And there's something even more important that really is on your mind tonight. It's painted on the back of your car. Explain. Yeah, definitely. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was sitting at home and and uh, saw on the uh, on the national news that there was two girls that went missing in Evansdale, Iowa, and obviously it's not far from uh, home in Des Moines, Iowa. And I actually played hockey in Waterloo, Iowa, so uh, Evansdale Evansdale is really close to uh, Waterloo and and. Uh, the area up there so uh, just uh, we had some uh, space left on the deck lid for this race in Iowa and we know there's so many people watching at home that this was just an awesome opportunity to uh, try to bring some uh, some notice and visibility to uh, everything that's going on and uh, you know if anybody uh, recognizes uh, the two girls or the names uh, they can call 1-800 the loss and uh, just if any uh, small lead as little as it is comes out of this uh, it's just uh, it's a huge uh, opportunity we had to uh, to do this for them. All right, let's talk about the race. Once again, you've had some momentum lately. What's it going to take to finally take that momentum and get a win? Yeah, I think uh, the big thing is we need to move forward up through the uh, field as fast as we can, uh, qualifying 17th. Uh, we need to get ourselves to the top 10 uh, quick here and then just kind of see how the track changes. You know, we got a lot of rain this morning, and, and uh, I think the track's going to be a little bit different than practice yesterday. So put the right adjustments in the car and get ourselves in the right position there in the last 100 laps. Put a, put a whole night together, uh, do everything right on pit road, and make the right moves, and hopefully uh, we'll be there at the end uh, bringing home $100,000 with Nationwide Insurance Dash for Cash and, and hopefully uh, Iowa Speedway Trophy. All right, a win would be great, but also making a difference for those two girls would be just as important for Michael Annette. Shannon? It sure would be, Rick. And uh, everyone is ready to go here at Iowa Speedway. The fans are here. Points leader Elliot Sadler will lead the field to green. NASCAR Countdown will be back in a minute. And we have heard the word before, opportunity. This weekend, a lot of drivers have it. Five drivers are making their Nationwide Series debut, and this may make you feel old. There are five teenagers in the field. One of those guys is Ryan Blaney, and he is standing by with Jim Noble. That's right, Shannon. 18 years old, I have T-shirts older than Ryan Blaney. You talk about the opportunity. How about your first race with Penske Racing in the car that captured a win at the Brickyard last weekend? Well, what's a realistic goal for you tonight, Ryan? Yeah, well, uh, talk about intimidating. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's been an honor to to be kind of welcomed into the Penske Racing organization, and you know, Discount Tire for for being on this car and Dodge. They they've really helped this team out the past few years. So it, it's an honor to. To be able to be with Penske this race and and the two other races we got, which is Richmond and Kentucky, so uh, I think we can we have a good enough car to run top three. I, me and Jeremy really think we got a good car tonight, and uh, we'll stay out of trouble and see what we can do. All right. By the way, he is racing the number 22. Of course, his father made over 100 Cup starts with Bill Davis Racing in that number 22 car. Rick. 
Well, another guy who doesn't have a lot of experience in NASCAR nationwide is Darrell Wallace Jr. But let's talk about the fact this is your second start. Mm -hmm. You're starting on the front row. Okay, you think the car will race well. What are the expectations for you tonight? Uh, definitely, you know, just logging all the laps that we can, learn as much as we can. You know, I learned a lot in the first race here, but definitely had a lot more to learn and still do after this race. So we're just going to go in there and give it all we got. And uh, starting second row, I mean, starting front row, starting second is pretty cool. We, uh, I was definitely devastated after it. I wanted to be pole, of course, but, uh, you know, uh, when the crew guy says, you got to save something for the crowd, so we'll go get them in the race. I know Elliot's got a strong car, but I think we've got an even better car. You know, Adam and all the guys back at the shop put a great car underneath me, so I just want to thank Joe Gibbs Racing and Z-Line Designs. Darrell Wallace Jr., once again, he's expecting to learn, but what he'd really like to do is learn how to win. Thanks, Rick. Another driver who has an opportunity here today is Danica Patrick. She finished 35th last week at the Brickyard and looking to finish strong here today. Let's take a look at last season compared to this year. In seven more races in 2012, Patrick has just one top 10 compared to last year's when she had three. And one of the biggest things that has battled, she's battled this season, are the DNFs. Five DNFs this season compared to just three last year. And Danica Patrick getting ready to climb in the car here at Iowa. We just mentioned the finish last week at Indy. You said yesterday in the media center that after that finish, you and your crew chief, Tony Urie Jr., sat down. You came up with a new game plan. What is that game plan? Well, uh, I, I guess maybe it shows a little with the qualifying that we, uh, that we had. And just to sort of decided, first and foremost, just kind of get back to basics a little bit. Be smart. Be calm. Be cool. Don't get upset with anything. And I really, make, I really wanted to focus more on the racing instead of going as fast as possible um, in practice. And that's what we did. And, uh, you know, we, we, we didn't put a, very much focus on qualifying. So um, it's not, a, not really trying to make an excuse. It just, um, you know, it seems like wherever you are in practice, you go out qualifying, and it just, it's just it's tough to make up for it. So, um, But I think that our car is pretty consistent. So uh, I hope so anyway. At least that was the focus. Consistency is the key word for Danica Patrick here this weekend. She will roll off 18th here today. A lot of people getting ready for this race. One of the best shows on the nationwide schedule. We will send it upstairs to the guys, Marty Reed and Ricky Craven, who will call the race when we get back. Festivities underway here at Iowa. The fans, it is full house here today. The drivers are on the grid. We are ready to go. NASCAR Countdown will get you ready when we come back. If you want a ticket to the Iowa Speedway tonight, right now, the only thing that is left is standing room only. That's right. Over 56,000 people are going to jam this 7 8 mile facility for tonight's NASCAR Nationwide Series event. Let's get our top stories reset. First up is Rick DeBrule. Well, Marty, you know, last year, Ricky Stenhouse actually won this race, but his engine died just as he was about to go over the finish line. The result was that Carl Edwards actually pushed him over the line. Well, Carl last year was sponsored by Fastenal. This year, it is Ricky that is sponsored by Fastenal on his car. And he was saying the sponsor said, you know, this year we'd appreciate it. Last year, we pushed you over the line. Could you take us over the line this time, Shannon? Well, the story of the week for Elliot Sadler has no doubt been how he rebounds from that restart call last week at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. His crew chief, Luke Lambert, told me they've rebounded before. They're a very strong team. They can move forward. However, Elliot said yesterday he's still very emotional about that call. So how do they move forward? Well, starting on the pole position is a good start. Going out and just racing is a better. Jim? Well, Shannon, tonight marks the final installment in the Nationwide Dash for Cash series. You've got Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Michael Annette, Austin Dillon, and Sam Hornish Jr. duking it out for $100,000. Now, this year, this week, rather, a new twist. Lucky fans are going to share in that prize. Let's go trackside. Please rise for the remainder of our opening ceremonies and remove your caps. Tonight, our colors, nation's, our nation's colors, are presented by the Iowa National Guard. Remain standing as Chaplain Jeff Arp from Iowa Speedway Ministries offers tonight's invocation. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful evening you've given us to enjoy one of America's greatest sports. We ask for your hand of protection upon each driver. We pray that you would keep your hand upon their vehicles, their traveling, give them strength. Give them vision, give them focus. We pray that you would keep your hand upon their safety crew and pit crew that are here to serve them tonight. 
We thank you for every fan in the stand, and we thank you for the men and women that are serving our country, protecting and fighting for our freedoms. And we ask your hand of protection upon them tonight as well. We thank you tonight for this opportunity to enjoy this beautiful night, part of your creation. In Jesus' name, amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome show dog universal country music singer J.T. Hodges. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there who oh, say does that star spangle banner yet wave o'er oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave so as the flyover continues and the fans get ready for all the excitement that is about to come as we also get ready for another night of racing in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, we welcome you back into our topside position in the booth. I'm Marty Reed, alongside with Ricky Craven, and welcome again to Iowa Speedway. Or maybe we should rename this place Stenhouse Speedway. <laughs> That'd be reasonable. You know, there are a couple things that stand out, Marty, about this racetrack and Ricky Stenhouse. Number one is the design, the progressive banking. Ricky takes advantage of that. Drivers will have options because of the progressive banking. He'll move around the racetrack. He'll find a comfortable place for his race car. The other thing he does really well, probably better than most, is he gives great feedback to his crew chief, Mike Kelly, which allows them to make the car faster as the race goes along. Remember the key. Be your best at the end. That's what they've done here at Iowa. Some exclusive company he could join. He could uh, get with uh, Jamie McMurray, Tommy Ellis, and Mark Martin with four in a row if he can do it tonight and have to win two more with joining Kyle Busch, Dale Earnhardt, and company at Jack Ingram. Uh, let's also talk about some of these young kids. I mean, we have got five teenagers in this race. Yeah, I'm pulling for every one of them. We heard it from a couple of 18-year-olds earlier. Let's start with Ryan Blaney. Raced with his dad. He's a great driver and a great coach. That's an advantage for a young driver. So he has a great pedigree. He's also won 100 quarter midget races. Even though he's 18, got a lot of experience. Darrell Wallace, Jr. This young man is aggressive, he, he's fearless. Everybody around him says that he's got all the tools. I think he's got a bright future in this sport. A half dozen can and east wins. He has a great comfort inside these race cars and had a great debut here earlier in the spring. And then a guy that's not 18 years old, but I think deserves a lot of credit. Michael McDowell has done a great job for Joe Gibbs Racing. This is gonna be his ninth start. Marty, he's finished in the top 10 in seven of the eight starts coming into Iowa. The young man deserves a full-time ride, and I think he's making that argument this year to do that next year. Drivers are climbing into the cockpits. When we come back, the command to start engines will be given, and we'll get underway. NASCAR Nationwide Series at Iowa is brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Nationwide is on your side. Welcome to Iowa state where success is measured by hard work and opportunity is created with one's hands and heart that's how life is lived in the land around the iowa speedway and that's how races are won on it 
And that is just some of the 56,000 people that are going to jam this facility tonight here at the Iowa Speedway as we get ready for a night of racing under the lights. Just a few seconds away from the command, the very beginning of this race. What do you think? What's well, we're going to see a little bit of aggression. you got some young drivers up front, so a little more experience toward the back. Remember, Ricky Stenhouse, the driver who's dominated this race, starts 11th. Let's watch closely how long it takes for him to get to the front because he will get there. Well, there is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. We'll find out if he can make it four in a row here at Iowa Speedway. But right now, it's time for us to go down trackside for the command to get tonight's race underway. And now, for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome from U.S. Cellular, Vice President of Sales for the Mid-Central Region, Kathy Hust. Drivers, start your engines! I got you. One, two, three, four. Whenever you're ready there, T. This radio is that good? Sounds good. Hey, cut it back off. Let's wait. Here. We'll How about a check, check, one, two? Ten four, but I got you. You got me? Wow, the engines have fired on the 43 cars that will take the green flag in just a matter of moments here at the Iowa Speedway. And fans, we want to remember to tell you to check out Race Buddy. It's enhanced coverage for select nationwide series races with more cameras than ever. All you have to do is log on to NASCARNationwideSeries.com slash Race Buddy. Well, we talked about it during countdown. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. will be our in-race reporter. He has a great track record here at Iowa. Not once, not twice, but three in a row. And we'll talk to the man that has owned this speedway for a year and a half when we come back. Welcome back to the Iowa Speedway here in Newton, Iowa, as we're getting ready to send the cars out on the first of three pace laps as they're just beginning to roll off pit road now. And of course, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has been the man to beat the last three races here. As you can see, the first two, not so good. In fact, the one time he started on pole was his worst finish. 22nd, his very first time here. But boy, the last three have been great. Let's talk to him as he is our in-race reporter. Ricky Stenhouse, this is Ricky Craven in the booth. You got me? 10 for Ricky, I got you. Hey, Ricky, we talked yesterday about the advantage you have coming here, knowing what you need for a feel in your race car. You're starting 11th. Do you have that feel? We didn't uh, quite get that feel that we were looking for in our fast and all Mustang, but um, I know Mike Kelly and guys have, have looked at a lot of notes over the past uh, few races that we've had here. and uh, We got a little of that feel at the end of practice, but... Um, not all the way there, what we were looking for, but uh, hopefully we got this thing down in. We got a long way to work on it. Um, you know, last year we did not start the, this race off very well, but ended very strong. So uh, it's going to be a fun one. Uh, look forward to it. Hope you all are too. Ricky, I got a question from Lindsay in Katy, Texas, and she asks, because of your dominance at this track, do you feel extra pressure to win here and improve your championship position? No, <laughs> that's a good question, but. Um, you know, I put, a, I put as much pressure on uh, myself as anyone, but that's each and every week. We want to win every single race that we enter. Uh, it doesn't always happen, but uh, that's always the goal. So, um, you know, we don't put any extra pressure just because we're here at Iowa, but, uh, you know, we, we would uh, love nothing more than to get four in a row. But uh, we're going to put on a show for you fans and, and have some fun. One more quick question, Ricky. you got uh, some young guys up front. You're 11th. How aggressive are you going to be early here? If you ask Mike Kelly and my guys, I'm always aggressive. So uh, we'll just see how it plays out. Um, you know, the, the best opportunity to pass guys is on these restarts. And uh, so we'll see what uh, we can get. But you also got to be aware of who you're racing. So we'll be aware of that, and uh, we'll go get them. Hey, Ricky, good luck tonight. Thanks a lot for your time. Marty's going to talk with the crew chief now, Mike Kelly. Cool. Thank you all. Mike Kelly, Marty Reed, you copy? Marty, got your loud and clear. Mike, we talked yesterday about the high expectations that you guys felt coming in here. How have you been able to manage them for the crew? Well, we set ourselves, we set our expectations high every week when we come to Iowa. You know, obviously with the three wins, working on our fourth here, you know, we want to do well. We want to do well for our sponsors, our owners, our and ourselves, you know. So it's been it's been tougher than we expected. You know, the tires threw us a little curb. We've worked on our car. We've looked at a lot of notes, and uh, we're going to put a show on tonight for the fans for sure. 
NASCAR is going to have a competition caution because of all the rain that we had washing off the rubber so that you guys can check at lap 50. Will that change your strategy at all? That turns it into a two-stop race from that point on. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Darn it, I was hoping you were going to tell me something good. All right, well, good luck, Mike. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Let's take a look at our onboard cameras. We've got quite a few for you. Elliot Sadler with our Chevy onboard. Austin Dillon with the American Ethanol onboard camera. And of course, you know Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has one with a Ford EcoBoost camera. Danica Patrick, GoDaddy.com camera. And then Daryl Wallace Jr. with our Toyota onboard. Ryan Blaney with the Dodge onboard camera. Justin Allgaier with the Nationwide Insurance onboard camera. And Michael Annette with the Nationwide Insurance Dash for Cash onboard camera. Let's talk now to our front tire changer, Mark Hollywood Armstrong, on that number 18 car. And Hollywood is our over-the-wall reporter. This is also a chance for young crew members to strut their stuff. Marty, it is for sure. With a lot of the nationwide teams choosing not to bring their cup-level tire changers here to the racetrack this weekend because of scheduling, it gives a lot of these young and up-and-coming guys a chance to make a name for themselves. We have some of those on all the Joe Gibbs teams here tonight, but one thing we're looking to do is welcome them with a victory here with the Pizza Ranch Toyota with Joe Gibbs Racing. Guys? All right, you be safe going over that wall tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Don't forget that you can join the conversation. Follow us on Twitter at NASCAR ESPN during the race. As you can see, the lights are out on the pace car. And let's listen in on the 22 of Ryan Blaney. Here was the uh, talk right before we go green. All right, Ryan, we're going to have some fun tonight. We're going to get this thing to the front. The guys on pit road, good, solid, smooth stops. It'll be easy in, easy out of the pit box all night. We'll have some fun. We'll see you at the end. So good advice for the young driver. It's great advice. And, and listen, he's got a little more responsibility, meaning Jerry Bollins. He's actually going to be coaching some tonight, and he's not used to that maybe with Brad Keselowski. So as you can see, going down the back straightaway, right up front, Elliot Sadler as the pole sitter has selected the inside with young Daryl Wallace Jr. I was like, God, what is the butterflies like in his stomach right now? I don't, I think he's immune to it. And, and I, that's a stretch, but this young man is so confident and so aggressive, so you got both ends of the extreme here, youth and experience. Big change from yesterday when it was a high of 93 over at the airport. Right now it is 78 and a wind at 16 miles per hour. Pace car has pulled down pit road. They come down the front straightaway, and this race is green. Daryl Wallace Jr. doing a great job hanging with Elliott Sadler. Had the run off of turn two, and he's going to clear him getting into turn three. Oh, and look at Justin Allgaier in that 31 car down low. They're going to try three wide coming out of four. Jason Leffler slipped a little bit. Remember, he's, he's adapting, transitioning back to these nationwide cars, been racing in the truck series all year. Daryl Wallace Jr. leads lap number one with Elliott Sadler listed as second. And Justin Allgaier moves up to third and side by side right there with Leffler as we go a little bit deeper in the field. That's Johanna Long in the 70, Danica Patrick in the seven. Yeah, maybe a little bit of contact there. Uh, short track racing. Ryan Blaney there in the 22, followed by the 38 of Brad Sweet. Maybe Stenhouse Jr. back there in the picture, right in the middle of this cluster of cars, not looking real strong here early. Sam Hornish. Looking a little bit better. They come by and complete lap number three, and it's still Wallace up front, Sadler, Allgaier, they're pretty close together, and Leffler's in that mix as well. And here comes, as you see on camera, the number 12, Sam Hornish Jr. As we go side by side, the 31 of Allgaier underneath the two of Elliott Sadler. Justin Allgaier showed this same type of muscle in the, in the spring race, Marty. And here comes Elliott right back on him. This is what everybody loves about Iowa Speedway. You've got more than one lane to move. It's really easy to overdrive turn three, carry too much speed into the corner, and then the car that you just passed will get a run off of turn four. He won't do that this time. You know, you, 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 know, you just adjust. You make that mistake, you adjust. And again, Darrell Wallace Jr., he's opened up almost a full second lead here early in this race as you were on board with Elliot Zadler. And you and I are looking at each other going, we didn't quite expect that from the young man. But we shouldn't be surprised. I mean, this is what I've had the people around him describe as we see Sam Horner's drive underneath Jason Leffler. 
Well, he's trying to drive under Jason Leffler. Leffler's trying to hang on for all he can. And there is the 11 of Brian Scott right behind him. This battle continues. Sam Hornish is destined to win sooner than later. You can see the progress he's made since they were here in the spring. He is in a championship position. But again, he seems to get faster and faster every week, familiarizing himself with this nationwide series full time. He's within striking distance, Marty. Finished well, second last week, obviously. Yep, as those three continue, let's go a little deeper in the field, check in on Kurt Busch. Remember, he did not even turn a lap in this car until qualifying earlier today. And there you can see as he has gotten around and ahead of the 33 of Brendan Gaughan. And there's Michael Annette right there in the 43 and Michael McDowell in the 18. On board with Annette. Checking back with the battle for second because Elliott Sadler is right underneath the quarter panel of the 31. Whenever you see a car like the 31 with Justin Algar pass the pole sitter early and then start to fade, you got to wonder if maybe they started the air pressures a little higher. Because th what this is suggesting is that the two car is actually coming into the speed a little later. The car is set up for a long run. We'll watch this. The next 10 or 15 laps will answer that question. There you see Austin Dillon right behind that group as well as he is running in the fourth position and already as we're working lap number 10 of 250 we've seen a lot of good action and some passing right up front as well as deeper in the field. Oh a little contact there for Cole Witt as he slides out on the wall. Stay with us. Welcome back to the U.S. Cellular 250 here at Iowa Speedway as we are working lap number 17 of 250 and you are looking at the race leader, young 18-year-old Daryl Wallace Jr. And you'd swear he was out for a Saturday evening drive. Marty, what really stands out about this shot is that he is so relaxed inside the race car. That's something that typically takes three or four years for a young aggressive driver to learn. That's the difference between being fast and being successful. You have to learn to relax in the car and he's doing it. A little deeper in the field you see that Austin Dillon now has gotten around Elliott Sadler so move Dillon into the third position. Sadler back to fourth. You know what's remarkable about Austin Dillon among other things he's completed every lap. That's not consistent with a young driver. Young drivers learn as they go, and you oftentimes learn the hard way. He's completed every lap this year, Marty. And he is the only driver in the Nationwide Series to do that. Dropping back a little deeper, side-by-side -side action. That is the 18 of Michael McDowell and young Mr. Moffitt. Brett Moffitt is going to turn 20 next Tuesday. Another one of these teenagers right now, and he is doing a nice job going wheel to wheel. Yeah, I got a text earlier from a friend who said they've been using him testing at Michael Walford Racing, and he says, trust me, this young man has got a load of talent, and he's backing it up here. You know, he's using really good judgment. He's not trying to get it all in one corner. And you see where Brett is a, another native Iowan from Grimes. Got several in the field tonight, and he continues this side-by-side -side battle. Let's get more on the 99. How about it, Rick DeBrule? Well, I can tell you that so far, like a kid, he hasn't said very much on the radio. Just talked with the crew chief, Scott Zipidelli. He said, nope, no words just yet. By the way, he's tested cup cars, but Friday in practice was the first time he'd ever sat and run in a nationwide car. Thank you, Rick, for the update. Let's get uh, some other laundry out of the way. Several cars have pulled behind the wall, including Carl Long, Tim Schendel, Matt Benedetto, Chase Miller, and Jeff Green. This action continues, getting a little close there as Michael McDowell's trying to take as much of the track as he can. Yeah, when I look at Michael's car, it tells me that they need that first adjustment. When these drivers hit pit road for the first time, that's going to be the key adjustment to determine where they end up tonight because that's going to be the big swing. That's going to be the difference between practice yesterday and what they're feeling right now in this race, and they're going to they're going to benefit from that if they make the right decision and if they give good feedback. The battle for second is between the 31 of Justin Allgaier and the three of Austin Dillon. That number four car is Daryl Haar. He is lap traffic. Let's get an update on Justin Allgaier. How about it, Shannon Spade? Yeah, this car that he's running here today, Marty, this is his workhorse. It's been on the track five times before. 
right now Justin's saying he just needs a little help rolling through three and four, but he's really good in one and two. Thank you, Shannon. Also going around the lap vehicle, Scott Saunders in the number 24. And Justin now got her taking a little heat now from Austin Dillon. The great thing about this racetrack is, again, as the tires wear, you can transition to a higher line, a different groove, you know, something that's a little more comfortable for your car. Drivers love options, and again, this progressive banking gives them that. Remember, Austin Dillon with that blue spoiler on the back is one of the four nationwide insurance dash for cash competitors and a little nudge there. Justin Allgaier cut him a break. Austin got a little loose off the corner, slid up in front of him, and Justin was a gentleman, but that's how you need to race only 30 laps into the event. And we want to remind everybody there will be a competition caution at lap number 50. Austin Dillon has pulled a little bit of ground out over the 31. There is your top five as we are working lap 28 of 250. And young Daryl Wallace Jr. has led every one of them. Welcome back to the U.S. Cellular 250 at Iowa. And fans, remember to check out Race Buddy. It's enhanced coverage for select nationwide series races with more cameras than ever. All you got to do is log on to NASCARNationwideSeries.com slash Race Buddy. And take a look at the race lead. It has gone from one plus seconds down to this. Austin Dillon looking for the lead as uh, lap traffic comes into play for young Daryl Wallace. Whoa, he <laughs> almost slides up into the 44 of John Blankenship. Yeah, so the difference between a three second lead and having a second place driver in your mirror is that you become defensive. You change your entry a little bit, you're a little slower through the middle. As a result, you don't carry the speed off and you kind of bottle things up. You have a hard time completing a pass on a lap car. Austin, as young as he is, is the experienced driver of the two. Well, and the 44 car obviously was there on the outside and my biggest question is Austin Dillon as you see now the 44 is now behind both these two cars but he is holding everybody up for a bit but Austin Dillon's car is obviously coming in as this race and this run progresses yeah and you know some of that is a product of experience so Austin maybe didn't abuse the right rear tire as much early in the race you see that little wiggle off the corner by Darrell Wallace that that suggests to me that maybe he was a little hard on the right rear tire but that is a product of experience. He'll understand his limits with these cars. It took you about 20 laps longer than you said, but good job. <laughs> you heard him on the radio. Sorry about that. <laughs> a little by play there. And, and, and we ought to say, you know, that the old man, Austin Dillon, that he is at 22-year-old, <laughs> passing the 18-year-old of Darrell Wallace, Jr. Yeah, so when they got bottled up racing one another, a little bit preoccupied with one another, it allowed Justin Allgaier to come into the picture here. You can see him third. Take a look at Justin Allgaier coming closer as well as Elliot Sadler. As they go around the lap traffic. That's the 14 of Eric McClure. It's going to get interesting because Hornish is laying down good laps. Justin Allgaier is running moderate and uh, it's going to get really congested because we're, we're in the thick of the lap traffic here, Marty. And remember, we've got the competition caution coming up at around lap number 50. So right now, as you can see, the top five holding station as they continue to work their way around the slower lapped vehicles. And obviously, if you're at risk of going down a lap, you're going to fight. You're going to fight hard to stay ahead of the leader because of that lap 50 caution. Or you want to be in that lucky dog spot, that's for sure. But certainly no worse than that. All right, the race leader for the second time of the day is, uh, or the second different leader, I should say, is Austin Dillon. He took it away from Darrell Wallace Jr. just a few laps ago. And we're about 10 laps away from the competition caution. We have a full weekend of racing action for you. Let's check the calendar. The O'Reilly Auto Parts NHRA Northwest Nationals. The qualifying action follows us right here on ESPN2 tonight. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series action from Pocono is at noon Eastern tomorrow. That's over on ESPN. We've also got the IZOD IndyCar Series in action at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. That's on ABC tomorrow, 1230 Eastern time there. And then at 6 o'clock Eastern tomorrow on ESPN2, final eliminations on the last stop on the Western Swing. 
in the NHRA competition. And our next stop on the NASCAR Nationwide Series will be coming your way from Watkins Glen, New York. That's 2 o'clock Eastern next Saturday, August 11th. And that'll be over on ABC. Well, you can see the sun is becoming a bit of a factor here as the drivers head down into turn number three. You're on board with Danica Patrick. First time we really had a chance to talk to her. She is running in the 16th position right behind her teammate, Cole Witt. Yeah, and she's doing exactly what she needed to do considering what happened last week. I've been impressed with Danica at times this year. I wasn't impressed last week. What she did to Reed Sorensen entering the turn at Indy, a 200-mile-an-hour corner entry, was not wise. She got the message from Tony Uri Jr., calm down, go back to the fundamentals, right. and we got the down, caution down. out. So the caution has come out. Let's get in a quick update on the seven. Rick DeBrule. Well, we'll check back in with Rick in just a moment, but the competition caution has come out here as we have completed 50 of 250 laps, and everybody will get a chance now to see exactly what has happened with their race car. And we should point out, this was a new right side tire that Goodyear brought, and that's one of the reasons they want all the teams to be able to look. Yeah, I think it's very wise, right? It's, it gives the teams a chance to understand what their limits are with this tire. Also, as you said, the, the track was washed clean. So it's going to be a little more aggressive on the tires. This is good for everyone. Two drivers that need big adjustments, I think. This team right here, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Kurt Busch. Both were kind of stuck eighth, ninth place. Need a really big adjustment here. In fact, Kurt is shown seventh on the scoring pylon right now. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the ninth position. So Austin Dillon will lead the lead cat lap cars down pit road. And we'll send it down to Jim Noble. Well, Marty, there's been a lot of cheerleading in the pit of Daryl Wallace Jr. They are really, really happy with the way the 18-year-old is racing right now. They need to tighten him up just a little bit. They'll do that with an air pressure adjustment and get both cans of Snoko Racing Fuel in. Ahead of him, Austin Dillon. He's tight, but he gets better and better as he runs. And they did a two-tire quick stop on the three. Shannon. Justin Allgaier running third. He says he's tight and needs more side bite. It's going to be four tires, air pressure. Sunoco fuel for Justin Allgaier. He's down and away. Guys? The race off pit road, as you can see, is uh, the spots picked up by Brendan Gone the most so far as he picks up 10 positions. And uh, they come on out, and the biggest loser, Darrell Wallace Jr., as he drops five. Let's go over the wall with our front tire changer, Mark Hollywood Armstrong. Nice we we'll gonna make an adjustment. We'll put a rubber in the left rear. Come on, boys. here at the U.S. Cellular 250 at Iowa Speedway after 55 of 250 laps. And you're looking at Darrell Wallace Jr. He led early in this race for a total of 36 laps, but he lost a lot of ground here. Marty, there's a lot of aspects of experience, right? And one of them is coming down pit road. You can see this is very conservative by Darrell Wallace Jr. Justin Allgaier actually gaining our car length and then getting even. Now, that's not a big deal early in the race. In fact, maybe cautious is smart. But if you're going to win this thing, you got to be perfect. Well, the top three that came out, Austin Dillon, Elliott Sadler, Justin Allgaier, all took two tires. Let's listen in on the two radio. Tires look really good, Elliott. Hopefully this will help me. Three looks like he's got a ton of four and drive right there. Where we get beaten at the most when he jumps the off turn four. You saw the temperature inside the cockpit at 95 degrees. It's a lot cooler outside, about 78, as we're back to green flag racing. And it was Sadler down low, and he's going to get the advantage. Yeah, Justin Allgaier was a little aggressive there, trying to push Austin at the initial start. I don't know if that got uh, I, I don't know if that got Austin a little bit loose getting into the corner or not. We'll know here in a lap or two. Look who's sneaking into the picture: the six car, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., the man who has won three in a row here at Iowa Speedway, and he is side by side with the 31 of Justin Allgaier. 
we should tell you the 51 of Jeremy Clements picked up the free pass. We have a total of 23 cars on the lead lap. Again, this is one of Ricky's strengths, making adjustments, giving great feedback from Mike Kelly. Let's see, uh, let's see if they swung big. And we got a battle for the lead here. Look at this, Austin Dillon, after only a couple of laps, makes a charge. I think he is the, the car of the class of the field right now, Marty. He hasn't completed the pass yet. They're down into number three. Can he seal it? Not yet. Not yet. This time it looks like he may get him. And he does. That sun's going to be a factor for okay, nice. a few more minutes. Down Back it up three. a little bit if you need to. On board with Justin Allgaier in fourth. Key to short track racing is to carry speed through the middle of the corner right now. That's what separates Austin Dillon from the rest of the cars. Right here. Makes the rotation. If your car rotates, which is another way of saying swapping directions, you carry a lot more speed off the exit of the turn. Right here, this car looks so good. Top four trying to open up some ground on fifth and sixth, which happens to be Jason Leffler and Kurt Busch. And we're on board with Austin Dillon. Boy, he is not working that wheel at all. It's pretty well dialed. When the car's right, Marty, you don't have to, right? And, and look, the driver can only carry a car for so long. Don't wear it out here. Good advice. When you're this fast and you're in clean air, don't burn up the right rear tire. His lead has grown to four tenths of a second over Elliott Sadler. And remember, these two are fighting for the championship. And Austin, on top of that, is leading right now in that nationwide insurance dash for cash $100,000 bonus. But hold on a minute. <laughs> Here comes Ricky Stenhouse Jr. I thought that was where you were going to go. <laughs> Let's go back a little deeper in the field. We check in on those two guys we were talking about. They're trying to reel in the top four, the 30 of Jason Leffler. And boy, Kurt Busch, he's putting some pressure on. Here he goes underneath. Yeah, he laid this out to me before the race started. He gave me the script. He said, Ricky, don't even evaluate me until I make that first pit stop. Remember, I got no laps of practice. After the first stop, Mike Bean will have given me what I need, and boy, that car looked good on that pass. Let's get more on the 54. How about it, Rick DeBruyne? Well, so you got to remember that Kurt wasn't even here yesterday. He came in and stepped in the car that Drew Herring had practiced. Herring says he gave him a fast car. Kurt agrees, but he said he wasn't quite sure about the setup. He said he was going to have to trust Mike Bean. Mike Bean was looking down the road. He wasn't totally sure that was going to be the way to go. But so far, as you see him move up, Mike Bean may have the right idea gone to victory lane with Mike Beam. He's a great guy to trust. Easy guy to put confidence in. You know, Jason Leffler's done a nice job, Marty, battling here with Sam Hornish and trying to close in on Kurt. Hornish putting the pressure on right now as they head down into the corner. It's a tough transition going from a truck that's got a ton of downforce, maybe a little easier to drive, to these cars. Well, he's had 15 total truck races as he's going to surrender the position to Sam Hornish Jr. His best over in the truck series has been fourth. He has finished third here at Iowa in the Nationwide Series in the past. So he knows how to get around this racetrack. And there is your race leader, Austin Dillon. And his lead has grown to eight tenths of a second over Elliott Sadler. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is third. ESPN's coverage of Major League Baseball continues Sunday and Monday. On Sunday, it's the Brewers. They face Matt Holliday and the Cardinals. That's at 8 p.m. Eastern. Then Monday night, the Yankees take on Prince Fielder and the Tigers. That's at 7. Sports Center to be seen in the New York market. Sunday night baseball is presented by Taco Bell. Monday night baseball is presented by USAA. And both games are available on ESPN3 and also live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. Brian Scott on pit road. Shannon, what's going on? Well, it was looking like it was going to be a great race for Brian Scott, guys. After that pit stop right about lap 62, he started complaining of a left front vibration. It only got worse. They have decided to bring him down. Take a look at it. As you see, they're changing all four tires just to be on the safe side. But we've talked about the bad luck that Brian Scott has had this season, and it's continuing here today. 
Well, he gave up 13th position to come in. They put four fresh good years, and 19.6 seconds later, he's going back out. And you mentioned, uh, Shannon, how tough a season it has been for him. Six DNFs. Yeah, this has not been the year that Brian Scott expected or hoped. Okay, let's go check back in. Austin Dillon is our race leader right now. He has led a total of 38 laps. We've had three different leaders, but let's go back to the restart because obviously that's a hot topic after last week at Indy. Yeah, it appeared to me as though that the three car got a little bit loose getting into the corner, but it was a product of this right here, folks. Justin Algar putting the bumper on the back and pushing all the way down into the corner. Now, that's not that much different than last week. here a lot quicker than it does at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You're exactly right, Marty. So this, you know, the, the three car looked like he was disabled getting into the corner, and it's just because he had no rear grip having gotten that push. So there is Austin Dillon. His lead is 1.8 seconds over Elliott Sadler. Then in third place, it is Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 2.8 seconds behind the leader. Justin Allgaier is fourth, 3.6 seconds behind. Let's go up to speed with Nationwide Insurance. Pick it up with fifth place. How about it, Rick DeBrule? Well, let's start talking by Kurt Bush. He's done a great job so far, working his way up. The words from the crew, they just told him on the radio a moment ago, keep doing what you're doing. When he came in last time, they gave him a round of rubber, took a little bit down on the track bar, and sent him back out. Yep. Well, Rick, Sam Hornage Jr. gave up a couple of spots on pit road after a slow pit stop on lap 52, then immediately proceeded to gain those positions back. The big thing for Sam right now is a little free in, a little tight in the center. Jason Leffler is running seven. Leffler, his first race back with Turner Motorsports in the Nationwide Series this year after spending seven years with that team. Jason Leffler just a little tight right now. They made a wedge adjustment on the last... Steady, smooth, being talked through this race by veteran crew chief Adam Stevens. His teammate Michael McDowell in the 18 car. Remember, he's very, very good at this track. Had a good race back in May. A late race speeding penalty knocked him back thus far today. Matt McDowell, or Michael McDowell, is just a little loose everywhere on the racetrack. They put a spring rubber in on their last pit stop. Shannon? Well, Brendan Gaughan started this race sixth. He had dropped all the way back to 13th until two tires stopped, moved him back into the third position, and that's where he stayed since that pit stop, guys. He's saying the car is just a little bit tight, but this is the same car that he drove in May at this very race. He finished 10th. And it is a strong race car. Rick? From Michael Annette, when he came in that last time, was complaining. It was kind of neutral and entry, but free on exit. They gave him four tires, air pressure, and it'll just round down on the track bar. He's a little happier with the car, but he's still got a long way to go. Brett Moffat talked to the crew just a moment ago, relatively happy. The big thing for him, obviously, is just the miles, as many miles as he can get on this car tonight in this race. In this race right now, he's doing fine. Jim? How about Ryan Blaney? We talked to him three races. First champs with Penske Motorsports. And I tell you what, pretty good stuff. Positive reinforcement on the radio for Jerry Bullens. The biggest thing right now, they're trying to adjust to that car. It, they set it up very similar to the way they set it up for Brad Keselowski. Not a lot of changes needed for Ryan Blaney, who doesn't have many complaints about the car right now. Danica Patrick right behind. All they did in that last pit stop was change the air pressure. She was complaining the tires were chattering just a little bit. They really weren't sure what the problem was, whether it was how loose it was when or out of the turn. As a result, all they did was make the air pressure adjustment and let it go to see what else they need to do. Marty? Thank you, Rick. 22 cars on the lead lap. A total of 10 cars are officially out of this race. And everybody is chasing Austin Dillon, who won the truck race here back in 2010, his first of four truck series wins and he is right now leading Elliot Sadler 1.8 seconds in fact the top three of the points are running one two three on the track
We're under our second caution here at the U.S. Cellular 250 at Iowa Speedway because of a spin by John Blankenship. We'll show you what happened to him, but first, everybody is coming down pit road, including our race leader, Austin Dillon. And let's send it down to Jim Noble. Well, Austin Dillon, as we heard before, not real happy about the restart, so he definitely wants to get out front after this pit stop. Remember, they came two tires on the last stop. They'll go around to the right side. This time, it looks like a four-tire stop for the three. Ahead of him, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., wedge adjustment, four tires. Oh, slips, the rear tire changer has slipped. That will slow down the six on this pit stop. Shannon. The two car of Elliott Sadler, they're talking in code down here, and the call was Alabama. That means apparently four tires. Oh, there's a tire loose, guys. There was a chassis adjustment for the two car, just battling forward bite. Race off pit road. Justin Allgaier picks up three. How about Sam Hornish's crew? Michael McDowell's team does a great job. So does Cole Witt as he picks up ten spots. Austin Dillon, the big loser, as he drops nine. We'll reset it all for you when we come back to Iowa. Welcome back to the U.S. Cellular 250 at Iowa Speedway. Make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. We are under our second caution as a result of John Blankenship getting turned. He got a little bit of assistance here. We'll take you back and show you what happened coming out of turn four. Yeah, a little bit of a bump, I believe, here through three and four. From Elliot Sadler's on board. John was running 26, two laps down. That certainly didn't help his effort. Now, we mentioned the fact that Austin Dillon uh, dropped all the way down to 10th here for the restart. Let's listen to the radio. What the hell was all that about, guys? Damn tire fell over the wall on the left front. Trying to come catch it. A lot of fuel only here. A lot of fuel only. We'll be fine. Be a little patient here because they're going to be doing that all night long. It's going to be two, four, no gas. Okay, buddy. So there you understand what went on there. 22 cars on the lead lap, and uh, as we mentioned, 10 cars are out. Up front, it is Justin Allgaier with Sam Hornish Jr. alongside on the high side on the 12, then McDowell, Leffler, and Cole Witt. That's your top five, and we're back to green flag racing. Danica Patrick there in the number seven did not get a good restart, and it's Michael Annette on the high side in the 43, and here comes the two of Elliott Sadler. Yeah, so you got Austin Dillon, Ricky Stanhouse, Elliott Sadler, Kurt Busch, all of them restarting 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th. They got better tires than the car in front of them. It's going to be interesting to see how they manage one another and manage the slower cars. There's Kurt Busch also in that mix on board with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. <laughs> They're measuring one another here. Oh, somebody's listen. The spotters are, are pulling back on the reins here. Come on, relax, guys. Battle for second heats up. Michael McDowell has the spot. The 12 wants it. Michael McDowell has been complaining about being loose in and through the middle and boy you can sure see it anytime a driver's loose he'll favor the high side of the racetrack Cole Witt in the 88 getting into this mix as well the great thing about this track with that progressive banking look at how long these two are side by side just fighting it out for position Marty the fast way is always going to be the short way which is right on the bottom but the great thing about this track is if your car's not perfect, you can find a place where the car seems a little happier. For example, the 18 car, a little loose, will go into the corner straighter, doesn't have to turn the wheel, doesn't bind the car up, doesn't exaggerate that loose condition, and he gets to run off the corner. But he also gets real close to the wall. Yeah. I was going to say, got a little too loose there. And what it's allowed to have happen, Justin Allgaier has opened up a 2.1 second lead because these two are literally fighting door handle to door handle. Yeah, you always slow down when you're racing one another. And a uh, little peak, a little peak for three wide. Michael Annette. Yeah, he thought better of it. Look on the high side there, the two car of Elliott Sadler getting around the 30. Jason Leffler. This is some great racing. Sadler on the high side still trying to go to work. Now on the 88 of Cole Witt, and look who's following him. The three of Austin Dillon. 
Sadler's found something up there. He has, and I'm I'm equally interested in the three car because out front he is the class of the field. Now we get to measure him in traffic. Elliott comes back down onto the low line. And now pretty much everybody straight in line. Just as I mentioned that though, look at Danica Patrick. Right side of your screen in that seven car, three wide and gets around Kurt Busch. Hey, listen, that's a power move and she gets a little crossed up in the middle of the corner. That's a, that's a show of authority. Jason Leffler in front of both of them right there. And there's Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the mix in the six. And now Ryan Blaney in the 22. When we saw Danica get loose in the very middle after making the pass, it's because she went back to the accelerator too aggressively. And she paid the price for it. Right now, she's looking to be the meat in a three-wide sandwich. Stenhouse, though, quickly clears. Here comes the 33 of Brendan Gone. Ryan Blaney. 18 years old, he's uh, taking care of business, keeping his nose clean, doing his job. His first of three races with Team Penske. Annika Patrick right now shown in the 11th spot, and it sort of has settled down for the moment. Austin Dillon and the 18, and there is Dillon. Right in front of him and now trying to open up some ground. Right up in front of those two, you saw the fact that Sam Horner Jr. and Elliott Sadler going after each other. And again, Justin Allgaier has opened up a 3.9 second lead. He's loving these guys fighting it out side by side back there. Yeah, but some heat is coming. Elliott Sadler, Austin Dillon. Watching the lap times, Marty, they are fast. Well, the number two restarted in the eighth position. The number three car restarted in the ninth position, back on lap number 96. And you can see where they are now, but they're still chasing that guy, Justin Allgaier. Back here at Iowa Speedway before a packed house, let's check in on the motorsports calendar because coming up right after we're finished here in Iowa, on ESPN2, it's the O'Reilly Auto Parts NHRA Northwest Nationals qualifying. Tomorrow at noon Eastern on ESPN, we'll have NASCAR Sprint Cup Series action from Pocono. Also have the IndyCar Series on ABC from Mid-Ohio at 12.30 Eastern time. Then tomorrow at 6 o'clock Eastern, back on ESPN2, it's the final eliminations from the last stop on the Western Swing. And then our next stop on the Nationwide Series is from Watkins Glen, Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern, August 11th. That'll be over on ABC. You know, the fans in Iowa have really turned out. They have seven major events, including IndyCar and the Nationwide Series and the Truck Series and on and on and on. They're always full. Tip of the hat to them and to the people here at Iowa Speedway. You better believe it, Marty. Drivers love it, and the fans love it here. Let's check our race leader as we're getting closer to the halfway point. There he is, Justin Allgaier. He's got a 2.9 second lead. It was 3.9 seconds before we went to the break. His lead over Elliott Sadler has been cut because Sadler has pulled away from Austin Dillon, who is now running in third. Sam Hornish Jr. is fourth, and Michael McDowell rounds out your top five. Now, the 81 of Jason Bowles was running 15th, but he is on pit road. Let's get an update. Jim? Yeah, Marty, they're telling us it's a brake issue right now. They've taken the left front tire off the 81 of Jason Bowles' car. They've got to put more brake fluid in the system right now. There's a good amount of brake fluid on the pavement. It's hard to see from our camera shot right now, but it is on pit road. So Jason Bolts, who was having a pretty good run, running inside the top 20, losing a ton of time here on pit road. Definitely a tough break for him because he was running very well. Yeah, so putting fluid in obviously solves the problem, at least on the surface, but you got to make sure it's not still running out. Look at this little action going on with Brett Moffitt, who has a birthday on Tuesday. He is getting around the 30 there of Jason Leffler. You see that's a battle for 11th on the track. Cole Witt right in front of him. That is for position. Witt is running in 10th. And Witt settled in and done a great job. I saw him get a piece of the wall early in the race. But, uh, 
you can still see that bump down in one and two. They've made adjustments to the track, taken some of that, the degree of that, that bump out, but uh, it still upsets the cars. Brett Moffitt, boy, I'll tell you what, he has done very well in the k and East Series. He's the current points leader. Become the youngest pole winner and race winner in East history back in 2009. That broke a record set by a young kid by the name of Joey Logano. This has settled down a little bit. Why don't we shift our coverage and pick up another good battle on the racetrack? As we're hearing word from our spotters that. Ryan Blaney and Johanna Long have got a pretty good duel going. There's Ryan in the 22 and Johanna in the 70. And Johanna deserves a lot of credit. I've seen progress from her all year long. She's predictable. She's very, very smooth in the racetrack. I see progress every week. And she's just 20 years old from Pensacola, Florida. Let's get more on the 22. How about it, Jim? Ryan Blaney only took two tires on that last pit stop, and actually, it appears that the number 22 car likes that setup better. Remember, these tires don't wear all that much. It is a much harder right side tire than they raced on in May, as you guys have mentioned. And Ryan Blaney, of course, the first of three starts this year with Penske Motorsports in that 22, making that two tire call work right now. So when you think of a young driver coming into this series in a great car, obviously a car that's had success, he has to keep things in perspective. He's got to keep stick to the fundamentals, Marty. Study the track, understand your limitations. You know, you don't need to you don't need to do it all in one race. He's doing exactly what he needs. Now he needs to concentrate on giving good information to his crew chief. One of the things I'm noticing, I'm watching his hands compared to some of the other onboard shots that we have seen. A lot more action going on in that cockpit than some of the others. Yeah, and again, you know, those are things that can be corrected if you're giving the right information to your crew chief. At this point in the race, you would have hoped that the car wouldn't, wouldn't be driving that loose. You know, you can see that turning back to the right through the middle of the corner. Now, Justin Allgaier is our race leader, so let's Let's check in on his onboard camera because last time we saw him. Now watch his hands. See how much input there is. Yeah, you can see him turning a little more to the right, and uh, obviously he's got great front grip being out front. You can turn the wheel left if the front tires will support it. But honestly, that's that's about experience. You know, that's a lot of that is experience. And the other thing that we don't see, which is a key component, is what these drivers are doing with their feet. That's what I love about short track racing is that you can be aggressive with your accelerator and the brake pedal and in some cases you have to physically turn the car his lead is 1.8 seconds over Elliot Sadler and 2.4 seconds over Austin Dillon that's your top three as we have just passed halfway we have worked and completed 128 laps now as he goes past start finish one more time so we still have 122 to go and Justin Allgaier our fourth different leader today Back here at the Iowa Speedway where you are looking at the 18 car of Michael McDowell. Now he is currently shown in eighth position, but we'll show you what happened to him just a few laps ago. Yeah, you see, he gets runs out of room on the exit of the corner, gets a piece of the 44 and a great save, not only because he got crossed up, but because he had Kurt Busch underneath of him. This is a squeeze that could have resulted in a three car wreck. Michael done. A, he did a great job there. Well, Kirk Bush got around him, so did Michael Annette, and then Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Speaking of Stenhouse, let's check in on his radio. No right rear side by entry, no right rear side by center, no right rear side by all. Other than that, the car's perfect. <laughs> and you know something? He can drive a car a little looser than most. The problem is, he makes his living through the middle of the corner. He drives deeper in the corner than anybody I know in, in this series, and he rotates the car himself. You cannot do that if you don't, if you do not have the side bite in the right rear tire. You just can't carry enough speed in the corner. Well, he hasn't led a lap tonight, but don't give up on him. He, two of his three wins came at leading later than lap 100. Here's the three on pit road. How about it, Jim Noble? 
Marty Austin Dillon has reported a vibration. They're going to go ahead and pull off pit road and change all four tires just to make sure that they know what's happening. He didn't say anything after the pit stop. So this is something that developed maybe after some contact that we didn't see on the track. But Austin Dillon, an unscheduled green flag pit stop. And with 112 laps to go, that is outside the window. Yeah, it is, Marty. That's certainly uh, a compromising position. And I will tell you, having been in the driver's seat, it has to be really bad for you to hit pit road under green. And bad, bad vibration. Don't forget, Austin Dillon is one of our competitors in the Dash for Cash from Nationwide Insurance. This is going to be interesting to see if he can come back. Because right now, Justin Allgaier is out in front by half a second over Elliott Sadler, and there's Sadler in the two car. So their hope, obviously, is that this thing goes green for a long enough time that the others have to pit. The two that Under are green. green. The two that are leading for the dash for cash money, Michael Annette in fifth, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in sixth. And Austin Dillon is now 21st, one lap wow. down. And he is not in the lucky dog position. So he's got to hustle, get around Jeremy Clements. Now, as you see this battle heating up up front, another thing that uh, Dylan's problem creates is a change in the points. Look at what happens as he would drop to third right now if he cannot rebound from this. As of right now, it's 19 behind Elliott Sadler. He'd be one behind Ricky Stenhouse Jr., but still time to go. 109 laps. Marty, I love the composure that Elliot Sadler has shown in the last 24 hours. Since I talked with him yesterday, he's regrouped, refocused, set the car on the pole, a track record, and he's done everything right tonight. He's gotten faster as the race has gone long. They both went around Mike Wallace in that 01 car. He is now 19th, the first car one lap down. Let's check in with Jim Noble. Well, Marty, I'm still in the pit of the number three car, Austin Dillon. They've asked all the tire changers if they hit all the lug nuts. They responded yes. They don't see any problems on the wheel that would say a loose wheel or something like that. Right now, they just think they had a tire abnormality on their right rear tire. Little bit of possible blistering on that tire, but nothing really severe. They're still asking a lot of questions and going over a lot of different things in the three pit. It's either the tire problem or possibly a loose wheel right now that brought Austin Dillon in on green. And remember, Austin has finished every race this year so far on the lead lap. He's one lap down right now. <laughs> Again, I cannot describe to you the degree that that car had to be vibrating or uncomfortable for, for Austin to hit pit road, particularly with a young driver. It's not that unusual for a young driver to, to you know, have to bounce off the wall a few times to learn that lesson. That was, that was very savvy. Things have calmed down for the moment up front, but look at this, the teammates going after each other. This is for position 14th, Cole Witt and Danica Patrick side by side. Danica has rebounded from a tough situation last week where I don't think she used good judgment. She's used very good judgment tonight. She's had a lot of racing side by side, put herself in positions where she could have been compromised like that. OK, you can get away with that a few times. But listen, halfway through the race, you're asking for trouble. If you get preoccupied with one car, you still got to focus on the racetrack. Now, that's smart. Now, the car in front. John Blankenship in the 44, that is lap traffic. And Brian Scott right behind Danica is a lap down as well. So they're sort of isolated in this little cocoon, you might say, of lap traffic and still trying to find a way to get around the 88. There is the race leader, and that's why they want to get on their horse, because they do not want to go a lap down to Justin Allgaier. His lead is three-tenths of a second here at Iowa. Been another great night of racing at the Iowa Speedway. Hope you've been with us since the beginning of the event as the action has been non-stop. We've only had two cautions. One of them, a cautionary move set by NASCAR at lap number 50, and another 
a spin by John Blankenship, but other than that, the racing has been fast. It has been furious. Four different leaders. We right now have a total of 17 cars on the lead lap, and there is first and second, the 31 of Justin Allgaier, followed by the number two of Elliott Sadler. I think it's interesting. Elliott Sadler had Allgaier on the ropes a little bit, and uh, Allgaier settled in and, and he drove away. That's pretty impressive on, on tires that are half worn, half fuel. Now, a while back, you noticed that Danica Patrick's no longer anywhere near the 88. During the commercial break, she was able to get around Cole Witt, and uh, you liked the way she handled it. It's very impressive. So she settled in behind Cole Witt, regained her composure, and then went back after him, got beside him through the middle, uh, stayed even on the exit, and then completed the pass as they got down into the next set of turns. I tell you, that's, that's very impressive. I mean, that's an example of learning as you go. She deserves credit for that. Well, and Cole Witt has since gone a lap down. So has Joe Nemechek. So only 15 cars on the lead lap. As there is Justin Allgaier. Danica Patrick is in 14th spot. So she's got to keep hustling that race car. Yeah, I can see Elliot is carrying this car right now. This car is starting to fade. The two car is definitely dropping off here a little bit, Marty. Well, let's get an update on our race leader. We haven't talked to, uh, to anybody down on pit road about it. How about it, Shannon? What are you hearing? Well, all guy are making those two tires work, guys. He's been very quiet on the radio. All he said was at the beginning of the run, guys, the adjustments really helped. It was a track bar adjustment as he was really needing help getting through those corners. Right now, all he's battling with is that race traffic, just trying to make his way through it, but the car, it's good. I'll tell you how good it is for him, Shannon. Allgaier had led only 33 laps the entire season entering tonight. He's led 68 this evening. He has been one of four different leaders. He has led the most laps so far, and his lead over Elliott Sadler, now six-tenths of a second. And now with 90 laps to go, we are in, within the window for these cars on the lead lap to be able to make it from here on in. So do you risk pitting earlier or do you stay out as long as you can there, Mr. Driver? No, you're going to stay out as long as you can. And the cars are separated enough that you can still focus on the track. And, you know, you're, you're able to put down good lap times, comfortable. Car is changing the balance because of the fuel being burned off. Well, Justin Allgaier last pitted on lap number 91. We are working lap number 163. There is your top five with 88 to go here at Iowa. ESPN's coverage of Major League Baseball continues Sunday and then again on Monday. First on Sunday, the Brewers face Matt Holliday and the Cardinals. That's at 8. Then Monday night, the Yankees take on Prince Fielder and the Tigers at 7. Sports Center will be seen in the New York market. Sunday Night Baseball is presented by Taco Bell, and the Monday Night Baseball is presented by USAA. Both games are available on ESPN3 and also live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. Back here at the Iowa Speedway, we were calculating about 14 more laps, and uh, some people are going to have to pit, namely the guys up front, but that is well within their window. They'll be able to go the rest of the way. Justin Allgaier is your race leader, and you can see Elliott Sadler in that two car is in second place. A little bit further back, well, let's go up to speed with all that with Nationwide Insurance and Rick DeBrule, you're up. Let's start by talking about Kurt Busch. A little while ago, they told him that he was three-tenths of a second faster than the leaders gaining on him. Kurt came back and said, I'm on the turnpike and I'm heading out. Shannon? Rick. Sam Hornage Jr., I tell you what, he's just been told to stay in the rhythm that's gotten him to this point thus far. They're already talking about pinning in just about 20 laps, making an air pressure adjustment and a track bar adjustment. But thus far, Sam Hornish really happy running in the top five. Rick? Michael Annette running for that dash for cash. You see the blue spoiler on the back side by side with number 12. Last time in, they only made two tire change. They're getting close to their next pit stop. Jim? 
Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has bounced back from a poor pit stop a couple of stops ago to battle his way back into the top 10. His big issue right now, no right rear grip. He has been complaining about the right side tires that they changed ever since he got to Iowa this weekend. Rick? Well, behind him, Brett Moffitt, the kid, hasn't said a lot on the radio. Initially, they were trying to free up the car. Now, later in the run, they're starting to tighten it up. Once again, it's all about education, and he's getting a great education tonight. Shannon? Brendan gone in the number 33 car. He restarted 13th, and this car really comes in the longer the run goes. He's moved himself up to the sixth position into the eighth position. The car is very, very for the 33 of Brendan Vaughn. Caution on the track, guys. Yes, we do. We have our fourth caution of the evening here at Iowa Speedway. That's, that's not good news for Austin Dillon, Marty. I, I don't see how that helps him. We have debris reported in turn number three, and you're right. The, that was not what Austin Dillon wanted. He wanted green flag stops all the way around, and hopefully then he would get a break later be able to get back on that lead lap. There's some of the debris that they're looking at. I think most of the teams were within 15 laps of having the pit. Obviously, this will be the last stop of the night if we go green. They'll be inside their window. Well, remember also, Austin pitted on lap number 137. He still will have to make another stop. We'll have to see how they decide to play the strategy. Maybe stay out if they can get the wave around. Tires got a lot of laps on them, Marty. Yeah, I know. But are you at a point where you have to gamble? Yeah, we'll find yeah. out. We'll find out. That's what makes this so much fun to do. As here they come, down pit road. Rick? Kurt Busch brings the car in. This is only two laps earlier than they planned on doing it. Overall, they like the car. They're making air pressure adjustments. Keeping him four tires, Sunoco fuel, and then they're ready to move him back out. Shannon? Their race leader, Justin Allgaier, was two tires on the last pit stop. They are calling for four tires on this one. Tight center off and loose through the, uh, through the center of the turn. And Elliot Sadler in his pit box as well. He's your pole sitter on the day. Right now, the guys are working on the right side of the tires. It is going to be a four-tire change for Elliot Sadler, and he just needs more forward bike, guys. We've seen a lot of cars, uh, including uh, Brett Moffitt. He took four tires, so as they come off pit road, It'll be interesting to see. As you can see, Kurt Busch picks up a spot. Elliott Sadler drops one. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. picks up two positions. Stay with us. This is going to get interesting here at the Iowa Speedway. Boy, things have really gotten good here at the U.S. Cellular 250 at Iowa. Here is where the four Dash for Cash contestants are running. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. with a good pit stop got out ahead of Sam Hornish Jr. and Michael Annette and Austin Dillon. More on him in a moment. Let's talk to our in-race reporter who happens to be Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Ricky Stenhouse, this is Ricky Craven in the booth. You got me? Ten four, I got you, Ricky. I see you've been working hard, but listen, you're close enough to the front now. You can see the lead. What have you got here for the end? I will see. We tightened it up there a little bit, getting a little free on entry uh, and exit. So hopefully that'll give us the drive off that we need to uh, get by these guys. It's going to be exciting here. How about the right side tire? Is it giving you what you need here? Can you be aggressive, Ricky? Uh, no, you cannot be aggressive with this tire. It, uh, it makes you drive it easy, which does not play into our favor. So been learning all night uh, how to drive this thing. Hopefully I got it figured out here for the end. Sounds great. Thanks for the time. Good luck. All right, we mentioned Austin Dillon. There he is. Now, his pit crew may have just given him a chance. They did pit because you were right, Ricky. They needed tires, and they, they made that decision. He is the first car on the one lap down, which means he's in that lucky dog position. And Jim, give us some more from pit road. That's right. Big call by crew chief Danny Stockman. Choose, chose not to take the wave around. Chose instead to come around, and as you said, pit take four tires they're good to go the rest of the way they've got fresh tires when they had fresh tires after the unscheduled stop party they were a second faster than anybody else on the track joe nemechek gets the free pass that gives us 16 cars on the lead lap up front you saw it was all and kurt bush in front two then elliott sadler ricky stenhouse jr sam hornish jr and michael annette that's your top six and we're back to green
Great restart for Allgaier. Conventional wisdom tells you if that car is so good on two tires, which is what they did last time, it should be great on four. And remember what Kurt Busch told you before the race even started today? Going to get better the longer we go. Give Mike Beam a chance to adjust on this car. And they have gotten better. And look at him there in that 54. He's got a little wiggle there. You're on board with Stenhouse, and there goes Sam Hornish Jr. around him. How about that crossover by Kurt Busch? Elliott got in a little deep. Kurt let off early, crossed down underneath him. Now they're even off a of turn four. The dash for cash, buddy. Look at it, three of those cars right there. The 12 of Hornish, the two that are side by side, the 43 of Michael Annette, and the six of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. All three of those are battling for the $100,000. And did you see the 99 of Moffitt get sideways? Yeah, he's driving like a veteran. He's doing a great job. By the way, 100 grand will make you do some crazy things, okay? Yeah, well, don't forget, we still have <laughs> 70 laps to go. Side by side, you see right there, the 18 getting awfully close. McDowell almost got into the 33 of Brendan Gaughan. Just fighting for a little bit of real estate. Doesn't want to get squeezed, getting into the corner. Completes the pass off of turn two. Notice also Danica Patrick back towards that group. She is running in 12th position. Ryan Blaney right in front of her for 11. Tony Uri Jr. gave her some advice and asked her to get back to the fundamentals, concentrate on finishing, seven wrecked cars in the last eight weeks. And I got a compliment, Dana, because she's done a great job so far tonight. She gets around Ryan Blaney there, so move her up one spot into 11th. See that three car of Austin Dillon, he is slicing through. Remember though, he is still one lap down. Best thing that you can hope for if you're an Austin Dillon fan is another quick caution. Yeah, you better believe it. Marty, he's not only got to get back on the lead lap, he's got to have enough time to carve his way up through traffic. 67 laps to go. He's carving his way past the 99 of Brett Moffitt right now. And there's that statistic we talked about earlier. He's the only driver this year to finish on the lead lap of every race. If you're asking what the record is, Kevin Harvick holds it. 30 races back in 2006. Well, that's good company. Oof. Can you this, imagine 30 races in a row you finish on the lead lap? This set of circumstances, this will typically lead to a young driver making mistakes because you have that urgency. You're trying to get back what you lost. You feel, you feel bad because you hit pit road under green and they haven't found a problem. This is where a young driver can tear off the fenders. We haven't seen that from Austin this year, but I'm saying that's what history has shown us. Well, it's settled down right now as he has no traffic around him. In fact, uh, our lead up front haven't missed anything. Justin Allgaier is leading by half a second. Let's check in on the six car, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He is running six. That's Michael McDowell in the 18 right behind him. Yeah, the six car doesn't look as stable. You can see he's carrying a little more speed into the corner, but then he doesn't have the grip through the middle. You see the 18 car grab a hold of the yellow line. That's what that's what the drivers refer to when they say side grip. As that car is turning into the corner and it continues to make that transition and it grabs a hold of the yellow line. That's just grip. Drivers like that, by the way. Stenhouse. Of course, three wins in a row here at Iowa, trying to make it four. Still got a lot of work to do. He's three and a half seconds behind the race leader. You hear Ricky say during the commercial, or during the caution rather, that he couldn't be aggressive with this tire. And again, it doesn't play to his strength. He's very aggressive with his feet. Very aggressive back to the accelerator. That's what this track requires on corner exit because these cars only have 650 horsepower. You have to be aggressive. Let's get an update on that six car. How about it, Jim Noble? You guys hit the nail on the head. The search for elusive right rear grip. That has been Ricky Stenhouse's complaint pretty much the entire second half of the race. Keep in mind, this is the same car that won the race in May. Same chassis. They said they had some updates to it to take advantage of the nighttime conditions. But ever since he unloaded on Friday, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has not liked this harder right side tire. And it has resulted in not enough rear right rear grip for him to feel comfortable out there. And you can see the gap as there is the battle for the race lead. Justin Allgaier in front of the number two of Elliott Sadler. 
And for Allgaier, he has now led 99 laps in this race. That's the most he's ever led in a single race. The prior was 88 back at Gateway. Elliott made a run on Justin a while back, and when he got to this point, he stalled. Boy, that was, oh, close. That was close. <laughs> yes, I, I, it was. Yeah. I think that was a deal where, where Justin got a little bit loose getting in and had to get out of the gas, and it caught Elliott by surprise. We hear it feathering that throttle. Yeah. Here he comes. He's got a look underneath. Battle for the lead. May go to the number two of Elliott Sadler. Yes. Clear, clear, clear. Now, can he drive away? Hey, boy, hit your balls. Let's go. 58 laps to go, and remember what happened last week at Indianapolis. Heartbroken when he was black flagged. Right now, he's out in front. Let's get an update on that uh, two car. How about it, Shannon Spade? Well, well, Marty, you know, I spoke with Luke Lambert, uh, Elliot Sadler's crew chief this weekend about that penalty and how they overcome it. And Lambert told me, we will not let this team be defined by what happened last week at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We're a strong team and we'll be able to rebound. But I did mention to him that Elliot that he's still very emotional about it. Lambert said, hey, this race tonight, it pays the same amount of points that Indy does, and getting him back out onto that racetrack and going for the win, it's the best medicine. Key component to winning a championship is showing resilience, and that's what we've seen from Elliot Sadler here in the last 24 hours. Very impressive. And right now, as they are running, he would have a 20-point lead over the three-car of Austin Dillon. Dillon still in the lucky dog spot, but he's 17. One lap down. They're all chasing that man. A full slate of motorsports action for you. The O'Reilly Auto Parts NHRA Northwest Nationals qualifying follows us right here tonight on ESPN2. Then tomorrow on ESPN at noon, NASCAR Sprint Cup action from Pocono. We've also got the IZOD IndyCar Series coming your way from mid-Ohio. That's at 12.30 Eastern tomorrow on ABC. And then at 6 o'clock tomorrow night, the straight liners will do it again. The final stop on the Western Swing. That's on ESPN2. And then our next stop on the NASCAR Nationwide Series comes your way at Watkins Glen, 2 o'clock Eastern, next Saturday, August 11th. And we'll be on ABC. There is the number two of Elliot Sandler out in front by almost a full second over the 31 of Justin Allgaier. And in third place and not closing is Kurt Busch. And we may have just found out the reason why. Not Kurt. So we get the temperature in it. This is what we're, we're all year with. Turn this, guys. Turn the fans off. Son of a... You heard it. You know, the worst part of that right there is that the driver's distracted. Anytime the driver is complaining about something like that, as, as emotional as he sounded, he, it takes him away from hitting his marks, his turn-in points, his braking points, and he slows down because of it. But he is still in the thick of it. He has maintained that 1.5-second deficit, but as he pointed out, the fans are on, which means the temperature is going up. Let's get an update on that 54. Rick? And in fact, you were talking about the fact that you get distracted, you begin to not think the way you're supposed to, and listening to the crew chief Mike Beam on the radio, calm, cool, collected. Keep telling him, keep doing what you're doing. At one point, you heard Kurt complaining about the right side, like, okay, we'll work on it when we can. In the meantime, keep doing what you're doing. Just keep going after the guy ahead. Great stuff. There's Mike Beam, and you can see the, the concern on his face. This team so much wants to get back to victory lane. He and Kirk complement one another. They are a great balance, and they appreciate one another. Now, we mentioned the fact that Austin Dillon is in the lucky dog position. He is running 17th. We're down to 44 laps to go, and here's what we heard on Austin's radio. There is a piece of debris right there on the apron in the middle of one and two. Just watch it when you come through there. Looks like it could very easily get kicked up in the middle of the racetrack. <laughs> It's well, a guys, base. We're, 
we're still looking for that piece of debris. But it's been funny because about every lap or two, either Austin Dillon or Danny Stockman, you know, they say something on the radio about debris, and then the crew chief will look down at the NASCAR official and say, have you found it yet? And the NASCAR official kind of rolls his eyes and says, not yet, boys. There's a small percentage of politician in every one of these drivers, and that's what we're hearing right now. Vote for me, please, <laughs> right now. Trust me. <laughs> Would I fib about debris on the racetrack? <laughs> Nobody else sees it, but it's there. Oh, gotta love it, though. You gotta love it. These guys are great competitors. He still has time, but the laps are winding down. All right, let's check in again on Danica Patrick because she is now running in the 10th position on the lead lap, and this has on a short track, Ricky Craig. Yeah, of, of all, all the different disciplines of NASCAR racing, this is probably the hardest. Ooh, it oh, just bit the wall. A little bit of the wall there. Okay, and that's that. We saw this in practice, Marty. You and I watched her in practice having a little bit of difficulty with the closing rate of cars, and that's what caught her. She lost her reference. She lost her turn in point, and as a result, she didn't have that. Uh, she didn't. She didn't have that uh, reference getting off the corner. She lost one spot as Brett Muffet got around. Let's take another look. Yeah. So when you're this close to the bumper and you swing out quick, you lose your line. Wall comes cl closing in on you. That's the 24 of Scott Saunders. Saunders is six laps down in 29th, and there you see the 99 go by. One of the few mistakes we've seen from her tonight, but you know something? She hit flat. If you hit flat, you usually do little or no damage. And Daryl Wallace goes around her, and he picks up a spot, so she drops now from 10th to 12th. And here comes Ryan Blaney as well, and Brad Sweet in the 38th, not too far behind Blaney. So what she needs is a little coaching here from the spotter saying, all right, go back to racing the track. Forget the car in front of you. Forget the car behind you. You against the racetrack. That's what you do with a young driver. Moving a little farther forward. There is Jason Leffler getting underneath Brendan Gaughan, and they touch. And Gaughan's up close to the wall and somehow keeps it off. What we're seeing, Marty, is that these tires are getting to the point where they've lost a lot of their grip. And look who's snuck in right behind the 33. That's Brett Moffat in that 99 car. Let's go back and show you again what happened with these two. Tires are worn late in the race. Jason Leffler gets back to the gas, loses the grip, moves up. And remember, Brendan Gaughan's already in the accelerator here. Great save right here. The track is really dirty. When you get up in there, you hear all kinds of noises and you're along for the ride. It was a good save. So there is Brendan Gaughan shown in ninth and Brett Moffitt, 19 years old, be 20 on Tuesday, would like to give himself a top 10 finish as a birthday present. He just might do it. Yeah, he's, you know what? It, it, the thing that really stands out is he's not, the car is perfect, doesn't have a scratch on it. He's not racing like a 19 year old. I am so impressed with what I'm seeing here. These guys continue running nose to tail. And the laps continue to wind down. Now there is our race leader, Elliot Sadler. One week ago at Indianapolis, you saw what happened as he went from leading at one point by 17. After the black flag was eight behind, came out of the race plus one. But as it stands right now, he would come out of here with a 20 point lead over Austin Dillon. But it's not over yet. If Dillon, who is in the lucky dog spot, can get a yellow, it would get him back on the lead lap, and we might just have a shootout between first and second. NASCAR Nationwide Series in Iowa is brought to you by QuickCrete. Visit QuickCrete.com. QuickCrete, it's what America's made of. The state capital of Des Moines, Iowa, 35 miles to the east, you'll find Iowa Speedway, and that's where we are tonight with 28 laps to go. And there is your race leader, Elliot Sadler, by seven tenths of a second over Justin Allgaier, 1.9 seconds over Kurt Busch. 
There you get the margin from first to second. There is third place on the 54 going around the lap traffic of the number 19 of Taylor Mossum. He's got a bit of an overheating issue, but still managing to maintain the pace. Got to drop back about another three seconds to Sam Hornish Jr. as there he is in the 12 car. And he is leading of the four drivers in that nationwide insurance dash for cash. So there's a hundred grand in his hip pocket if he can just stay there for 26 laps. How about the 43, Michael Annette? He has three career top five finishes, all in the last five races. He, too, is in the dash for cash hunt, and he was our winner back at Indianapolis. Of the, of the five you just mentioned, Marty, Sam Hornish is laying down some really good laps right now. He's, he's almost four seconds behind, but he seems to be getting stronger. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., of course, trying to get four in a row here at Iowa. He's third on that list in the dash for cash drivers. And then in seventh position, it is Michael McDowell, 7.4 seconds behind the race lead. There he is in the number 18. He's had a few exciting moments tonight. We saw him get sideways and make a nice save. And then we'll drop back to catch Jason Leffler, as this is a one-off visit for him with his old team at Turner Motorsports, and he's given this car a good ride as he is running in eighth. He's picked up where he left off of this team. Solid. And how about the 99 of young Brett Moffitt. Moffitt looking to become the fifth driver this season with a top 10 in his nationwide series debut. Uh, both Moffitt and Darrell Wallace Jr. running 10th can be really proud of the job they've done tonight. They've gotten everyone's attention. Darrell Wallace led the first 36 laps of this race. And he's uh, been holding station in between about 9th and 13th. And there you see right there as he is in the top 10. And now a battle for the 11th spot on the racetrack between Brendan Gaughan in the 33 and Danica Patrick in the 7th. Danica went back to studying the track, got in a rhythm. It's about making speed. Now sizing up Brendan Gaughan gets a good run off of turn two. Got to be careful not to carry too much speed into the corner here, especially as the fuel's burned off. Car's going to get a little tight. You're going to put more steering into it. Don't try to get it all in one set of turns. And she did. You know, she, she set him up in three and four, trying to finish it here on the exit of turn two. Not done yet. Brendan's hanging on on that outside lane. Good battle going on here. And look who's sneaking into the picture, Ryan Blaney. You're all riding along with Danica there, and I know that everybody watching saying, I'm just gonna go a little deeper in the corner. It, it leads to pro it leads to mistakes, it leads to problems. You lose the right rear, you turn right, you, both of you end up in the wall. She's doing this the right way, using a, a lot of patience. And again, we hadn't seen a lot of that the last couple of months. And boy, Blaney is trying to put the pressure on as well, and he's looking to go underneath Danica. We, it's going to get dicey. Again, it's late in the race. Three wide through the corner, and look at Blaney. He not only picks off Danica, he gets the 33 as well, and Danica gets around Brendan Gaughan. Give a little bit of love to this racetrack. Again, this racetrack supports that kind of racing. That's why we love coming here. So you've got Blaney now running 11th, Patrick in 12th, and 13th is Brendan Gaughan. And a little bit further back will be the 38th of Brad Sweet. That's the 11 of Brian Scott. He's been a lap down since early in the race. There is Brad. So he's got a nice run going in that 38 car. And then in 15th spot, another lady that we need to tip our hat to, Johanna Long. Winner of the Snowball Derby in 2010. Anybody associated with short track racing knows how prestigious that is. And the last car on the lead lap is Joe Nemechek. He is in jeopardy, though, of going a lap down as he is 24 seconds behind the race lead, which, if you know your times here at the track, means he's in trouble. 
Justin Allgaier is closing fast. And of course, we've already mentioned the fact, as there you see, Elliot Sandler, and Justin Allgaier, Kurt Busch, one, two, three. 15 and, laps to go, Marty. And there is the 87. As we now have a problem for Austin Dillon. Nemechek has got the lucky dog spot and time running out. So Austin Dillon's chances of getting back on the lead lap just suffered a severe blow. He's had a hard night. You know, he's had. Uh, so let us go then. Let us go and we won't mess with it. He's, he's fast. You know, he's got to look at the big picture. It's not what they were looking for, obviously, but you don't want to make it worse. Austin won the nationwide dash for cash back at New Hampshire. Michael Annette, the 43, he won at Indianapolis. And the question is, who's going to win tonight? Remember, Austin was running third on the racetrack when he had to come in for that unscheduled pit stop. While all this is going on, we've got some action going on between the two young guns, the 99 of Brett Moffat and the 20 of Darrell Wallace Jr. There they are. And both are in position for a top 10 finish. It means a lot to a driver. Big, big difference between 10th and 11th. So don't get too greedy here. You know, show one another some respect, but uh, I just, these guys have done an outstanding job all night. They understand when to make things happen, when to wait for things to happen. That's not something that comes natural for 19, 18, 19 year old drivers. Speaking of making things happen, how about Elliot Sadler? As we continue to watch this battle as it's heating up again. Yep, Darrell's got a run on him here. I think the most difficult part of the job for a driver is that right there, going into the corner underneath another car. Because, Boy. because if you carry too much speed, Marty, you lose the right rear. You lose the right rear, you have to turn into well, it. And Darrell could have slid up on him there and did. Nice, clean driving by both of them there as they got around the 01 of Mike Wallace. And here they are going side by side. And will we see these two perhaps next year as a full time ride? Well, I, they both have a bright future. And I, they're both an absolute complement to the series. Darrell trying to complete the pass, still can't quite get clear and now there's lap traffic and oh it's getting close that's, oh that's a pick Brett Moffitt tried to use that lap car as a pick that was Eric Darnell in the 40 and you're right Brett tried to pin him down there making lift and he just did not and I gotta say that Darrell Walls Jr. he handled that like a veteran he moved him up the racetrack a little bit <laughs> <laughs> These guys, but yeah. they're familiar with each other. That's they, right. They race together in the K&N series. That's right. That's exactly right. And they know each other. And there, Daryl Wallace finally gets around. Whoa, problem with the 54 we're hearing is, yes, Annette goes by. There goes the six of Stenhouse. Kurt Busch is in trouble. Yeah, it looks like a right front tire. Rick? Yeah, he's been complaining about the right side the entire race. That's been the big issue. In fact, at one point they said, that's the problem working with all year long. They're going to bring him in. Now, they pointed out earlier they had sticker tires to save in case they needed to see a lot of smoke coming off that right front. A shredded tire on the right front. We'll see if it comes off here. Look at the damage that was done to that tire. He goes back out, but obviously that was the damage. Man, he did a great job of not going in the wall. Yes, he did. That's camber. The inside of the right front tire wore the inside. That means a little aggressive with camber and Boy, he did do a great job not to stick it in the in the in the wall. All right, laps are winding down. Let's find our race leader. There he is, Elliot Sadler. Remember at the beginning of the broadcast, we talked about how he had a problem back at Darlington, found himself in the wall, rallied back, got back to the points lead. And look what happened last week at Indianapolis. Just has a one-point lead after he thinks he's going to win the inaugural race and ends up getting a black flag penalty that costs him dearly. And here he is, maybe, going to win this race. Yeah, I think it's a real test of his mental abilities, the capacity of him, not just as a driver, but as a leader. Do you fold up after a situation like last week, or does that become a catalyst to you winning the title? And right now, I think he's making a statement. In fact, he's made a statement all day long. 
and remember, Luke Lambert had to keep the team rallied. Two laps to go. The crew has done their job. Everybody refocused. Here they are with a one-second lead over Justin Allgaier, although he's now got some lap traffic in front of him. Cole Witt in the 88, Daryl Haar in the fourth. There is Luke. Give him a ton of credit because they rallied. I mean, that they needed this desperately because here we go with the white flag lap. White flag. Marty, they, did, they didn't need it a month from now. They needed it this week. They have to find a way to put last week in the rearview mirror, and nothing does it more than a dominant week, dominant race. That's what we've seen out of Elliott. The streak is going to end for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. His domination of Iowa is over. It now belongs to Elliott Sadler Jr. Oh, What a win for Elliot Sadler. There's Luke Lambert, and could you hear the emotion in that voice? Yeah, if there's any doubt about what Elliot Sadler's thinking about, he just he just backed it up. They are not taking the championship from us. There you see the others as they come across the stripe, 11 through 14th. And let's talk to Luke Lambert. How about it, Jim Noble? <laughs> I tell you what, I want to know what this guy did over the last six or seven days, taking Elliott Sadler, taking this whole team back from the disappointment of Indianapolis. What does it mean to win here at Iowa? Well, obviously, it means a ton to us right now. I mean, what happened last week is uh, something that we're putting in the past. Um, you know, it was a little bit of a heartbreaker, but when we got to work Monday morning, we were here to race Iowa. So um, we're moving forward, and we're here to win a championship. So we know how much this means to Elliott. How much does it mean to you personally? It means a tremendous amount to me and everyone on this team, and everybody back at RCR. I mean, we're really proud of this whole group. Uh, I just can't say enough about everybody at RCR that works so hard in the nationwide program and throughout the complex. We got a really, really awesome opportunity. We're excited to be a part of it. Congratulations. Go celebrate. Thank you. Thank you. That's Luke Lambert, Elliot Sadler, a winner here at Iowa. And Elliot wants that checkered flag. I got to say, Elliot looked awful when I talked to him yesterday and he found a way to pull it together and refocus and we wonder who's going to take this championship maybe we got a sample tonight a statement race for sure the lead will be 18 points now over Austin Dillon Ricky Stenhouse Jr. will be third 21 points behind Sam Hornish Jr. will be 34 points behind in fourth and who gets the dash for cash money that is going to be Sam Hornish Jr. collecting $100,000. And a lucky fan will also share in that. In fact, let's uh, send it down to Rick DeBrule. Well, Sam Hornish, you are having a rather unexpected year, I would say. Things are going your way these days. Let's talk about this race and $100,000. Did you really think you were going to pull this off? Um, not really. You know, I <laughs> felt like we had a pretty good car. Um, in qualifying, but after how uh, race practice went yesterday, I wasn't exactly sure how we were going to be. And uh, just real happy that the guys put a good car under me. We did exactly what we needed to do. And, um, you know, the excitement that she's got right now is, uh, is makes it all worthwhile. But, uh, you know, we're out here trying to get points, and we lost a little bit to the leader today. But um, we're going to have our days, too. So we just need to be smart about what we're doing, continue to finish these races, and just real happy that. Uh, you know, we got the Worth Car top three finish. We've been real fast in these cars this year and haven't, uh, haven't got the finishes we deserve. Well, let's bring in Tammy Altieri. Tammy is crying. She just won $100,000 as the fan who was designated to win if Sam Hornish win. We've got a check in here for $100,000. Not a bad payday for Sam. And Tammy's going to hold hers up as well. Look at that. Two $100,000 checks courtesy of the Nationwide Dash for Cash. Yeah, like I say, this is not the year that Sam Hornish thought he was going to have. And I think Tammy is a Sam Hornish fan for life. I just love that. <laughs> Thank you, Nationwide, because look at what you're changing lives here. I mean, that's so awesome. And Sam was going to get on a plane and fly back to Pocono yet tonight. But, uh, boy, what a run as he picks up the $100,000 Nationwide Dash for Cash money. All right, there is the number two in victory lane. Let's go celebrate with Elliot Sadler and hear what he has to say. Elliot Sadler was the picture of disappointment. 
Today he's celebrating his fourth victory of the year here at the Iowa Speedway. Guys giving you high fives. Talk about redemption. That's just a perfect word to describe this weekend for you. I did speak with your crew chief, Luke Lambert. He said he wasn't going to let last week define this team. But what have the range of emotions been like for you, Elliot? Well, it's been a tough week. I mean, we really felt like uh, we should have won that race last week. But my dad had knee surgery this week. And he gave me the best advice I ever could get from my father. He said, do not let them take this championship from you. Go to Iowa and kick their but and my one main financial team showed up with a good car yesterday worked on it all day we got a lot of help from austin Dillon and his team that's what teamwork's all about made some changes this morning we're in the right place at the right time tonight this win feels really good talk about the statement that you guys made here today what is that statement to the rest of the competitors well they're gonna have to come take it from us we're not gonna lay over we're gonna be really good i think the rest of the year really hit on some stuff here the last month and I'm driving with a lot of confidence. Luke is making a lot of good adjustments right now. And we're just communicating probably the best right now that we have all season long. And that might spell trouble for the rest of the team. I'm so proud of everybody from One Main Financial sticking behind us. Got a lot of people here from Hunt Brothers Pizza today. Rich Childress made a trip over today. They won the truck race today with Joey Coulter. We sat on a pole and won the race tonight. But uh, this is definitely a great win for us. And there's Richard Childers coming in. Enjoy this win. What do you think about this? Uh, what, is this what does this say about how this team has been able to rebound, Richard? Hey, they did great. Luke made some great adjustments tonight. Elliot got on the wheel. I come on there and said, you can do it, buddy. I knew he could. <laughs> great job. Thank you. you guys enjoy this celebration. You certainly earned it. Guys? All right, let's take a look at the results, and we'll show you the total of uh, 13 cars on the lead lap. There are the top 10, and boy, some impressive runs. Daryl Wallace Jr. there in seventh, Brett Moffitt in ninth, Ryan Blaney in 10th. And uh, Jim Noble has caught up with the man who finished second. How about it, Jim? Yeah, I think Justin Allgaier knows that Elliot Sadler is a pretty popular winner given the circumstances, but you had your chances and we're kind of running that two down at one point. What did the two car have that, that you guys didn't have tonight? Uh, they just had some run, uh, middle run, middle run speed. We were good on the short run and really good on the long run. We just seemed to be a little bit slower than they were in the middle. So hats off to those guys. They did a great job. Um, man, you know, it's, it's so frustrating to run second and you can see him and you're catching him at the end there, but it's a testament to the guys here at the shop at Turner Motorsports, um, everybody at Hendrick Engine Shops, Chevrolet, obviously Brant being on board. Uh, they had a lot of guests here, had some folks from Brazil here, which was really cool. Um, my family and, and just everybody that's involved in this deal. It, it was a fun race. It's just fresh when we went in. Thank God we had a great day. And on we go next week. Uh, man, I, I'm bummed we, we, we would have been in that nationwide insurance test for cash. Had we, had we run a little bit better at Indy and maybe won 100 grand today, but, but it wasn't in the cards, and we'll go on to next week. Congratulations. Nice run. Thank you. That's a runner-up, Justin Allgaier. Rick? Standing by with Michael Lynette to, uh, before the race, we talked about momentum. You feel it's on your side. I mean, this is your best finish here, but you still are lacking that victory. Once again, what was it you were missing in this race? Yeah, just each time, uh, I don't think we quite have a winning race car, but uh, we battled hard all day. I started 17th, and Got our way in the top 10, I think, within 10 laps, and just needed to keep tweaking on the card and making it better compete with the uh, the two and the 31. They were pretty dominant, but uh, you know we missed out on that hundred thousand dollar check from Nationwide. But uh, th it's an awesome program. We were happy to be a part of it. Happy to have the uh, two girls from Evansville, Iowa, on the uh, deck lid that we talked about earlier. Hopefully, we did some good there, and we keep uh, knocking out these top fives. We're gonna get a win here pretty soon. Now, before the race this weekend, we were talking about the fact that you know your qualifying is okay. He said it's not really where you want it to be. You look at where you finish. Do you think if you could just improve those qualifying five, six, seven spots, it might make a difference? Yeah, definitely. I think it'll just make for a, for an easier night for us. So that's uh, you know, like we talked about, the one area we need to uh, work on, and we get that done. And and uh, like I said, we'll be uh, moving these top fives into a victory lane. Once again, he's got momentum. He's got confidence. He just needs that victory, Jim. Rick, all good things must come to an end, and the three-peat did not turn into a four-peat for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. You never seemed quite comfortable all weekend with this new right side tire, and I know you were looking for grip all night long and, and never really found it, did you? Yeah, no, we didn't, we didn't find it all weekend. Uh, our fast on Mustang just, just lacked right side grip. They, uh, they changed it, uh, saying they had problems with it last time, which I'm not really sure that, that we really had any problems. Um, but it's part of it. Everybody, you know, it's the same tire for everybody. Um, we just didn't quite figure it out. Uh, we missed out on the, the nationwide insurance uh, dash for cash again. 
Uh, but oh well, uh, you know, we getting a little points on second, uh, lost some to Elliott. We'll, uh, we'll just get to work. Um, you know, it's uh, just part of the game. You got a couple of road courses coming up in the grand scheme of this championship battle. How about, how do you feel about heading to Watkins Glen and then Montreal? I feel better. Uh, you know, it'll be our second time at Watkins Glen. Last year was our first time, so it took a while to, you know, figure out the racetrack. At least we're uh, going back with uh, being familiar with it. But um, I think I thank all the fans for coming out. Uh, fast and all for jumping on board with us. Uh, you know, we wanted to get them in victory lane, but uh, hopefully we can get our other sponsors, Cargill, Noss, everybody. Uh, hopefully we can get in some more wins this year. Solid top five for Ricky Stenhouse Jr., but obviously not the win he wanted. Rick? Standing by with Danica Patrick. You had a moment out there on the track, but the main thing is you gathered it up. You brought it home nice and safely. Relatively calm race for you, and that's a good feeling right now, isn't it? Yeah, and that's, you know, that's kind of what we were trying to do is just keep your head down and... You know, there was a little section there in the middle getting up to halfway where we were dropping back a little bit and the leaders were getting a little bit close, but luckily the yellow came out. And we, our car was, that was the time that we only took right sides in the pits. And uh, But I think the car was relatively consistent over the whole run, and especially when we were in clean air, we felt really good. I felt like I could run almost as quick at the end of the stint as I could at near the beginning. So um, so it was, you know, it was, a, it was a solid day for the GoDaddy car. We've been having a stretch of some not-so-good races. So... Um, you know, short tracks, um, uh, you know, getting almost inside that top 10. I wish I would have, but dang, it was like I, it was like I picked off one and lost another there at the end with, uh, with the 22 and the 33, and then the lap traffic was why I hit the wall on the outside there, just, um, just stopped up right on the exit. And I just got to be better at getting around lap traffic and getting around cars in general. When I'd get free, I'd be fine, but, you know, when I was behind him, I'd struggle. So I just got to work on that, and, um, but it was a solid day. Let's talk about the fact that your best short track finish at this point. I mean, let's talk about what you've learned out there about how to handle these short tracks. What's the lesson tonight? Uh, well, I, I mean, I think it's just experience and time, of course. And I just think it's Tony and I getting, you know, more in sync with, you know, what I need out of the car. And, you know, this time, this weekend, we've, you know, I said at the beginning of the broadcast, but focused a little bit more on race runs and consistency over over a long period of laps and, and not so much just getting one lap in. We've been doing a decent job of doing that lately, but it hasn't necessarily paid off um, when it comes to either qualifying or the race. So um, so forget practice. Use practice for what it is, and that's just practice. And um, we, we really built ourselves a car that was consistent over the run, and we set it up more free this time than we did in the, uh, in the May race, and um, I think that's why we were a little bit a little bit better and so again it's just time remember it is our first full year here at nationwide shannon seventh place finish for daryl wallace jr jr you told me yesterday that your goal was to come in here and finish better than you did last time which was ninth you not only did that but you led some laps as well what did you learn oh i learned a lot i know uh, i think i got out too hot right there at the beginning and kind of used the tires up but uh then we fell off right there in pit road uh, mistake on my fault there so but it's uh it's cool to Cool to lead the first lap. I know uh, Elliot. I don't know if he gave it to me or uh, I took it away from him. So that was fun there. I'm glad he uh, glad he got the win. That was cool. But uh, definitely learned a lot from just running in the pack. I know our car wasn't that great on restarts, and that's where we lost all our track position. So uh, if we could um, tighten it up a little bit more on that last run, we uh, I think we could have got a shot for running at least top five. But definitely better than ninth. Great finish for Daryl Wallace Jr., who'll be back in the Nationwide Series both at Richmond and at Dover. Jim. Well, Shannon, one stop better than Daryl Wallace Jr. with sixth place Michael McDowell. You know you're always going to be around the top when you're in this 18 car. Take us through your night today because there was a time where you guys got good track position and were able to do something with it. Yeah, we did. We, you know, we kind of rolled the dice a little bit. Uh, it didn't take tires on the uh, that second stop, try to get track position. Uh, worked out good for a little while, but on that long run, uh, we quartered the tires pretty good and lost that track position back. But uh, everybody worked really hard in this Toyota Camry, and I, I just got to thank all the folks at Peach the Ranch. Um, it's fun to get behind the wheel of the 18 and have a shot at winning. Um, this is our fourth or fifth consecutive top ten and um, you know you always got a shot to uh, the challenge for the wins and um, you know and I just love being in nationwide insurance series it's um, it's a lot of fun for me to uh, to be competitive and we are hoping for more for sure but uh, we'll go to Montreal and see if we can't get a win before the end of the year all right thanks Michael let's send it over to Richter Brule yeah and a very excited Brett Moffat uh, no longer a pure rookie you now have your first race 
under your belt. And we were talking a moment ago. What did you learn tonight? You said there was an awful lot. What are the key lessons? There was so much I learned tonight, let alone this was my first time ever in a nationwide car. Um, you know, learning pit stops was big. Um, and then learning the arrow. These cars race so much different than an East car. Learning, you know, what gets your arrow loose and how to how to tuck a fender to get downforce on it um, when you're racing right behind the cars. That was the big lessons, and I think I learned a lot tonight. Now you talked about a moment out there with Michael Annette. What happened? Uh, Michael just drove in the three, um, you know, and I just I was already a little loose in the three, and he just kind of sucked me around, and that was I learned that arrow loose real quick. So uh, from then on, you know, I kind of you know gave everyone a little room if they're on the outside of me just to be safe. But uh, it was a great night for Rab Racing and for me as well. You feel like you learned what you wanted to learn so far? I definitely did. Um, I wish we would ended up a little better, but I guess a ninth place on my first start's not bad. All right, once again, Brett Moffat, uh, pretty happy the way things have turned out for his very first nationwide race. Not bad at all. Let's talk a little bit more as you see Elliot Sadler celebrating a hard-fought victory tonight here at the Iowa Speedway. But there, for the first time in the nationwide dash for cash, four different winners. And you can see New Hampshire it was Austin Dillon, Elliot on Chicago, Indianapolis with Michael Annette, and of course tonight, Sam Hornish Jr. You know, they were asking the young guys what they learned. Yeah. What did we learn tonight? Marty, I learned that the frame of mind Elliot Sadler has right now was inspired from last week, and I think it's going to carry him toward the championship. I also learned that Danica Pre uh, Patrick, excuse me, can handle the pressure. The future is bright. Brett Moffitt, Darrell Wallace Jr., Boy, it's just a very entertaining race. It was. It was a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed it as well as we did because we're going to show you the ticket to the race and hope that you'll join us at Watkins Glen International next weekend if you're in the area. Of course, all our friends up in Montreal, we'll see you in a few weeks as well. And then on to Bristol, Atlanta, Richmond, and on down through the rest of the campaign. Let's uh, talk to Jason Leffler. How about it, Jim Noble? That's right. We can't leave without talking to Jason Leffler and his return to the Nationwide Series Top 10. I know you thought you could win this race, but solid effort. Yeah, it was good. I got to think uh, Nationwide Insurance. Great to be back in the series. AccuDoc, great clips. Everybody at Turner Motorsports. It's a lot of fun. Um, we just got out. We got took two tires and got uh, behind on that restart. Never could get the track position back. But I got to think Trent Owens and all the guys. It was a lot of fun. I'm glad to be back. Right. Nice run. Eighth place for Jason Leffler. So as Jason celebrates. The biggest celebration is right there, and it is a great trophy that they give here. You can see it down there, the old-style fuel pump, and it's got the race event on there as well. And as we get ready to go to the road courses, if you're the guys that are running up front for the championship, what do you try and set as the goal? Well, experience matters, and, and, and Ricky Stenhouse and his crew chief told me they feel like they might give up a little bit to Elliott Sadler going to these two road course events after what Elliott did tonight you got to say the needle has swung toward the two team. Well, as you can see, the number two on top of that pylon and an 18-point lead over the number three of Austin Dillon. Don't forget, tomorrow at noon over on ESPN, it's going to be the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Pocono. Four of our guys from tonight will be making the trip back over there. And, of course, we'll join Allen and the gang as uh, they'll get ready to take you on the tricky triangle. We mentioned the uh, point standings. Take a look, and you can see exactly how the entire top ten is shaping up because behind the top three, you have Sam Hornish Jr. 78 markers back is Justin Allgaier, all the way down to Danica Patrick in that tenth position. Final comment? I had a great time, Marty. This is a great racetrack. The fans have supported it. Look forward to the next one, my friend. Absolutely. And we'll, you'll be back together with me at uh, Montreal as uh, we're going to say farewell for the evening now. And don't forget about tomorrow at noon for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Pocono. Coming up next, it's the O'Reilly Auto Parts NHRA Northwest Nationals qualifying action. And, of course, our congratulations go out to that man, Elliot Sadler, as this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Ricky Craven, Shannon Spake, Rick DeBrule, Jim Noble, I'm Marty Reed. Till we meet again.